Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the C3 Friday Free For All. I'm your host, Cody Lashney, coming to you again with another opportunity for you to be a part of the C3 Panthers podcast. That's right. It's the Friday Free For All. If you would like to get a part of the madness, the link to join is in the description box of the Facebook and the YouTube video. And I just posted it in the comment section. So if you want to come on here and uh, talk some junk about the Carolina Panthers, well, damn it, this is your opportunity to do so. Ain't nothing to it but to it, boys. Let's roll. You already know I got my guys here with me. Panther Pickle, Kenneth, cool as the other side of the pillow. What's up, bro? Hey, what's up, man? Today, I'm going to tell everybody the guys I am going to lock that if I was in charge, wouldn't leave this team this year or next unless somebody gave me like five first round picks or something stupid yeah and you know what pickle put that on twitter today and i said you know what that's a damn good topic because so much of the news right now is around potential trades who you would trade who you wouldn't want to trade so hey we're all going to answer that today who are your players that are untouchable for the carolina panthers next up comes all the way from massachusetts this man, uh, I think he's been on damn near every every single Friday free for all. You know him, you love him. It's Nick Montero. Nick, what's up, dude? What up, Cody? Thank you for the great intro, man. It's Friday. There's nowhere I'd rather be. Man, that rule is gone. Yes, sir. Feels so good. And dude, Steve Wilkes, man, he is a breath of fresh air in the aspect of. Doesn't take two minutes to say what can be said in 30 seconds. Amen to that. <laughs> Dude, Matt Rule is no more. We are in the Steve Wilkes era. Uh, you know, I, I named the show Can Steve Wilkes Save the Carolina Panthers season? And we're going to open up with that. Uh, I know all of these dudes. I don't have to worry about no craziness with them. So let me go ahead and welcome them to the show. My man, Alex, A1 Panthers. What's up, dude? How are you, man? What's up, fellas? Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Um, just want to let you guys know I will be at that game on Sunday. So oh, Cal- nice. I, I, live, I live in Cali, so, you know, I'm going to be cheering go. those Panthers on. I'm going to cheer my ass off. Yeah, um, rock on, let's just, bro. Let's just hope, you know, keep pounding, baby. Steve Wilkes, let, let's see what happens. P.J. Walker in the yeah. helm, undefeated. Never yeah, lost. Yeah, man. PJ no. Walker has never lost as a starter, man. So that that ought to, uh, you know, that that ought to be interesting to see what the what the Panthers are able to do. By the way, in 2020, PJ Walker started against the Detroit Lions, also led by Matthew Stafford, and came away with the W, baby. So we're gonna talk about PJ today. Uh, next up, my man Michael. Michael, what's up, bro? What's good, guys? How's everything going? Yeah, I I just can't wait to see how Steve Wilkes turns this whole team around. I hope, at least. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, (laughs) it it starts this Sunday, man. It's a brand new era. Matt Rule is out of our hair. And, uh, you know, Steve Wilkes has to to be a part of building something (laughs) brand new. Let's see if he can do it. Yeah. Next up. My man Al the Sailor, he's been here every single Friday. Al, what's up, bro? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Not, not much, Cody. Good, chilling, bro. How you been, bro? Oh, I'm doing good, man. Uh, doing just ready to talk. Just ready to talk. Yeah, just ready to talk and listen to you guys. You know, let's see where, we, where we're going from from here, whatever, whatever. I mean, you know, you're listening yes, to us. So. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate Thank you being here. And uh, next up. We got my man JD all the way from the beautiful Isles of Hawaii. JD, what's up, bro? What's good? What's good? How y'all doing, man? Doing good, man. Here to talk some Panther football. We have a big time show in store for everybody. Um, again, we we already got people in here. We got seven people in here. I can fit three more on screen at the time. If you would like to be a part, the link is in the description. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. Hey, man, if y'all have noticed, this channel has been uploading hella content, putting out content all the time. So hit that notification bell for every single time 
the uh, C3 Panthers podcast goes live, and we upload YouTube videos, man, because we've been doing a lot of it. A lot you of it. Up, take a shirt, <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, as long as you're repping, that's all. That's you all got, y'all, y'all, y'all got me yesterday, Cody. Oh yeah, oh, I watched oh, the, I, I found a video. I found, yeah, I did. I found a video on YouTube or somehow. I thought you was live, and I was in the chat chatting up, and I'm thinking, how's the chats he's showing ain't in this your chat? <laughs> and somebody at the bottom popped up and said, they posted this a couple of days ago. I went, oh, <laughs> but you, can, you can do a live premiere, so you can do a premiere, and that way people can talk in the chat room. While the video is premiering, but uh, yeah, man, we've been up to hella content. So hit that notification bell for every single time yep. that we go live. Consider hitting the like button, subscribe, all that good shit. Look, let's just jump into it, boys. Um, so we'll get to some of the trade stuff uh, a little bit later. First off, I want to measure everyone's confidence level going into this game with the Rams because I kind of feel like the morale has jumped back up. Now that Matt Rule's ass is out the door. So, what is your confidence level going into this Sunday with the Rams? Whoever wants to go first, jump on. 60 40. Well, okay. 65 30. It, I'm, I'm real close to wanting to be. I think we're going to win, but I I really do. And I believe we're going to win because. Uh, I, I'm, I, at I just, I, I'm at the game. I'm at the game. That's yeah, why we're going to win. Yeah, I'll, I'll be at the you game. Know, Stafford, Stafford's <laughs> banged up. Do, He's yeah, not mobile. He's right never been mobile. The Rams' offense it's, is atro- offensive line is atrocious. You know what? To me, let's just let's just take the gloves off. The Rams got stupid. Well, they always been stupid, but they got stupider. They let the right guard go, the left guard retire. They already blew up all their first-round picks on people that wasn't worth it and their second-round picks on people that wasn't worth it. Now, they suck. And mm-hmm. the guys they go oh, on the oh. field are wearing out. Here's the thing, man, and this goes for every NFL team. Okay? Hey, hey, Nick, do me a favor. Missing... Come, back in, come back in and come back out. I'll save your spot for you. It's doing the audio thing again. Uh, and while I do that, I'll come right back to you as soon yeah. as you're back in. And, uh, uh, right before we do that, let me welcome the man, the myth, the legend. It's the professor. It's the professor. Yo, what's good, guys? Yo, 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 yo. yo. Um, I was thinking, you know, I wonder with Nick if it's the Bluetooth. I've yeah, always I was, yeah, I was even problems. thinking about I've too. always had problems with uh, Bluetooth. Hey, there's, hey, there's echo an echo. Tone. You yeah. probably have probably it coming, have coming through, through your speakers. Better. Yep, better. Yeah. Like 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 it. Sorry, my bad. My yeah, bad. Now I always you forget to turn it off. I yeah, always I'm forget good. to turn yeah. off on the sound bird. But uh, what <laughs> I was saying is, is I think that I always have problems with my Bluetooth headphones. Yeah, I, I really like them. Um, I like uh, uh, I don't use Bluetooth. I got they're wireless, but they got one of them little uh, it's dongles. The, uh, yeah, I got a little yeah. dongle in the back that come with the headsets. Yeah, but everything I've got's with the dongle. Bluetooth, I wish Bluetooth so. worked better with my computer and Streamyard, but it's always a problem. Anyway, yeah, uh, enough of that. It, it's, um, a, it's a it's a problem for me too, man. I got yeah. the wired piece for it, but unfortunately, I have to use my phone and. And or Apple kind of sucks with that. Yeah, so. no, it's all good, Nick. Uh, what, what were you gonna say, Nick? Before you, uh, before you are you mess up. So, so here's the thing that we got to remember about every team, and this includes our own, even pre mat rule. Okay, it doesn't matter if the coaching sucks. This is the NFL. This is the best of the best. Yes, there are weak points on every single team, but every single team has its strong points. Okay, they have Aaron Donald. They have Matt Stafford whenever he plays like he's supposed to. They have Cooper Cup. You know, they do have pieces there that we do have to be mindful of, and there is a very real possibility that they pull out the win. But given the fact that the biggest problem that we've had up until this point, minus the defense last week in our safeties, okay, is has been the quarterback, I'm ready to see P.J. Walker come out and sling the ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And that's really what he does best, isn't it? 
He comes out there and he slams the ball. Like, that's what, uh, Who's got music playing in the background? Yeah, if you got to be or whatever going in the background, mute yourself uh, while we're while we're doing stuff. Um, but yeah, so um, let's continue to jump around here, and I'll add some more people here. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think honestly, Cody, I think when it comes to this game, like, and I've said it last week too, um, it's gonna come down to the you know the turnover, like the turnover battle again. Yep. I think this week especially it's going to be real i was kind of excited i was hoping jc horn was going to get out there i don't think he's going to be able to play on sunday uh which is going to be unfortunate i'll be shocked if he plays on sunday but i don't think he will but yeah and i think that was going to be a huge matchup him against uh cooper cup Mm -hmm. i thought that was going to be a big deal and now with we got dante what is it dante jackson and um cj henderson it's going to be a little bit different um we'll see what wilkes you know has lined up this week, I think as if we get some pressure on the quarterback, obviously their line is really, really weak. So that's going to be a big thing as well. And then offensively, yeah, PJ Walker's just going to. I hope he slings the ball around, but let's let's like hope he doesn't throw a lot any picks. That, he, that's going to well, be the he, big thing. So that's the thing with PJ. He will always throw a pick. Yeah. Okay. But he opens up the field so much more than the quarterbacks that we've had. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Okay? You know, and I watched him in the XFL. Now, XFL is not the NFL. I Trust me, I get that. But he opened up the field in the XFL. There was quite a few times where the very first play of the game, you know, 50-yard touchdown to start off the game. That's what this team needs. And he's been on this team for three years. Yes, he's had two starts before this. But think about the receivers that we've had. They haven't really changed much over much over the last three years. So he's built that chemistry with him. Baker has only had a few months with him. And if I may throw that in there, PJ is, for what some may disagree, right now PJ has the best group around him they could go into. He's never played, but he's never started behind a offensive line like he will this week. He, he oh, He's oh. never even had a better offensive coordinator than the than he's oh had. listen he's never had a better offensive line he's never had a better receiving core i mean right now the talent is better than it ever has been for the carolina panthers that's why it sucks so bad that you know our quarterbacks just have not been able to live up to anything uh i See, wanted to welcome one more thing i want to yeah, go ahead, there, cody on pj walker okay the last two times that he started christian mccaffrey has not been on the field but, yeah, yeah, that's you know, true too. The, win, the wins came later in the season. It was after Christian McCaffrey was out. It was after we had already deemed them as basically losing season. No, uh, PJ had CMC for uh, the Arizona game, but yeah. and, uh, was, Nick, you're, Nick, you're but didn't Cam those. play in that game too? Yeah, that's the game Cam played in also. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. And by the way, shout out John Jenkins in the chat. John is always telling everybody to witness the Walker wonder. Uh, he said, this is my favorite time of year, this special time when it's every other Panthers quarterback is hurt. It's time, time to witness the Walker wonder. It's right John, on time. John. Yeah, it is. And by it's the like, way, this- we, you know, we should start putting an over under on it. Like we could and, have and, done that, put odds against what week it was PJ Walker gets in there. And that man is consistent. Every time I see him, he's talking about PJ the Walker Wonder. Uh, hey, I, I want to welcome uh, uh, three more people to the stream. Uh, first, the Cynic. What's up, dude? Welcome back to the free for all, man. How's it going? Thank you guys for uh, having it. Yeah. Um, so, I guess I'll, I'll just start initially with saying I got to be honest with you guys. Uh, and I hope the dude's doing well in his life. I hope he has a phenomenal existence, but PJ Walker fucking sucks. Um, <laughs> okay. Like, he's awful. And, and I just want to read some stats for people to understand just how bad he actually is, because we all know the two touchdowns, eight interceptions in the pros, 58% completion percentage. Okay. That's all with Brilliant, 13. I want to fight you on this. You guys know how <laughs> difficult it is to throw less than 60% completion and double-digit interceptions in college, because he did it three times. Like, that's at Temple, too. That's not SEC defenses you're playing against. You know what I mean? It's like, 
it's kind of amazing that he even get that he even like made it to an NFL team with statistics. Well, I, I, like I'm going to forgive him on Temple. He had Matt Rule there, so you know. That is, that, don't get me wrong. That is a fair point, but like, I don't, I don't know if some of these guys in the SEC who we draft a lot, or in the Big Twelve, you know, Baker, Kyler, Jalen, any of these guys. I don't know that they ever threw double digit interceptions. So I'll have to double check on that. But like in college football, double digit interceptions is really difficult to do. You only got twelve games, uh, yeah. wide open offenses. Uh, the competition isn't as good. You know what I mean? But you are yeah, throwing yeah. a lot in college. You know what I'm saying? The volume of throw of passing yeah. offenses in West Coast. But I think that's a good, um, yeah. you know, at least thing to think about. And do you think it's because maybe it's he's got traits that translate to the program, not necessarily the history of his play. So some of the problem with college players is, is they play well in college, but their traits, their strength, their speed, all of that is so, um, I guess, normal or average when they get to the pros. Does he, I mean, he just has a cannon. He's mobile. You know, he can make every single throw technically, but maybe just hasn't had the success like you're talking about. Well, yeah. and one thing I'll, I'll actually say something to, to to that point, which is that Josh Allen also sucked in college, um, and I sure. was actually amazed that he was drafted in the first round when he was drafted. Very happy to be wrong about that because he's been a very exciting player. But uh, when he played at Wyoming, it was not very good. The thing is, though, is you know when the rare examples when something like that happens is you know you got, and I'm not saying Steve Wilkes can't be a great coach. Maybe he can, but you know. The whole situation in Buffalo was geared for an excellent quarterback to become – well, an excellent talent to become an excellent quarterback. Um, I mean, it's possible. I just He's got, an I anomaly, know. though. You know, I'm, well, I mean, I'm I'm so tired of people using Josh Allen as, like, a norm. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah, the, exactly. An, that yeah. is the entire anomaly. And the problem that maybe Josh Allen did for the entire league – is now he makes it so guys like him go in the first round. So, like, Trey Lance. Yeah, uh, everybody who, Zach is expected Wills. to be the next Josh. Uh, RG3. But, like, RG3. Like you can't three. find that guy in round four anymore, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. RG3, yeah, that's, was, that's drafted in the, RG3 so, uh, was drafted in the first round because Cam Newton had a great rookie year. Well, he was also – didn't he win the Heisman, though? All right, so yeah, let me I, go ahead. Uh, uh, I'm, I, yeah. He I'm, wasn't I'm even the let, best. He wasn't even the best quarterback through Washington. Right, so, hold on, I'm oh, going to let Nick, uh, Nick, Nick <laughs> respond to uh, the same, and then I'm going to introduce two more people. So ahead, first things first, as far as the stats are concerned, okay, yes, his stats are terrible in the in the NFL as far as in as far as interceptions that sort of deal, okay. He is always, he, except for two scenarios, he's always come in mid-game. And when have you known a quarterback to come in mid-game when the rest of the team has been doing terribly and the starting quarterback goes down to do fantastic? It just doesn't happen all that often. Okay, The guy comes in off the bench while the rest of the team is tired. Everything is thrown out of whack. Okay, Now, in the XFL... He went 15 for four, 15 touchdowns, four interceptions. Different league, but something to consider given the fact that he was actually time. He had the time to sit down or not sit down. He had the time to actually grow a reputation with the rest of the offense. He was given yeah. that starting role in the XFL. So there's credence to the fact that there is a real possibility that he could do something in the NFL if he's actually given the proper reps. Yeah. And he's and gotten them with the team. Yeah, the fact, that is, we're, the, the fact that we're better right now. Yeah. I mean, our offensive line right now, believe it or not, is a top 10 offensive line in the NFL. I mean, the, and that that's so weird to say. Yeah. That the I'm, Panthers it, have one of the best it, offensive lines in the NFL. It, it doesn't even make sense. Uh, do you see why it was – do you see uh -huh. why it was uh you see why it was kind of like um not ridiculous for us to have some sentiment of excitement going into this year? Yeah. Like absolutely. as in like the offensive line's playing pretty well, the defense has been playing yeah. pretty well. I mean, like did we say they're gonna go be number one? But like that mid level we've always said if we could just get a mid level offensive line, we mm -hmm. should be significantly better. So we got it yeah. this year. 
Then we got some decent defensive play. We've we've they've scored some turnovers and some you know that they didn't do last year. They actually put points up. And then of course it's derailed by fucking terrible, terrible ass quarterback play and just disaster on the offensive side of the ball and up the chain of command and coaching. Uh, yeah, I'm in, if, I'm in if, the middle with this though. Like as far as uh, you know, Nick, like I agree, he needs the opportunity, a chance for sure. But then again, also he probably wouldn't even be on this team if Matt Rule wasn't coaching the squad. Honestly. Well, let's be honest, if well, that's, that's a good I'll point. That's on probably that one, true. Man. Not with not with what he <laughs> yeah. did in the XFL. Man. Why are you trying I'll to fight so much tonight, Nick? <laughs> you know what, man? I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm all about for the little guy up. getting his shot when he deserves uh, it. Let, let, let's be frank. I'm about to open it up. Let me thank Just Don't Care, who definitely does care. Appreciate you, brother, for another $5. That's big time. Appreciate that love bomb. Let me introduce SC Based. SC Based is a longtime listener and joiner of the free for all. SC, what's up, brother? Hey, Cody, what's going on, man? How's, how's it going, man? I'm doing good. What's up, man? Hey, hey, listen, listen to this. Uh, going into the summer at training camp, uh, after we drafted Matt Corral and we signed Baker Mayfield, it was almost automatic that PJ was going to get cut. Isn't this uh, funny and ironic that yeah. he started because he was a guaranteed cut? I mean, when yeah. we drafted Matt Corral, so it, this is funny mm-hmm. how everything comes full circle. Um, it, yep. it really I is. They they even asked that to PJ in his press conference. They were like, you know, they they brought in Baker. They still had Sam Darnold. They drafted Matt Corral. Like, P.J. Walker was the odd man. And now look at him. Panther Nation is depending upon this man to try and get us a W, man. That's uh, it's a sign of the times, if anything else. Uh, next up, I want uh, yeah, I'm going to open it up. I want to just make sure I okay. introduce everybody, and then I'll let people jump in all, all after it. Uh, Eric, 37, happy to have you back on the show. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? Doing good, man. Doing What's great. your confidence level on P.J. Walker? Uh, I'm generally excited to see if he could show that he belongs in the NFL because he's truly talented and not just because Matt Rule was the head coach. So I want to see if he comes in with that chip on his shoulder and approves something to himself and, and everyone around that. He does deserve to be in the NFL and that he wasn't just like some XFL wonder. Right. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh so look, I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let it kind of open up. Uh if it gets to you know everybody talking over each other, I'll jump in and go to one person over the other. But I'm gonna let y'all have a free for all, man. Uh I know uh, JD, uh, uh I believe it was JD that got my attention. Uh, who was it that was gonna say something right before I, right before I started? Pickle and uh, JD. I, yeah. I just I just wanted to uh, speak on what Pickle was saying and what Nick was saying. Like, um, I mean, you look at PJ's two starts and the performances he put up in those starts. I mean, you have to take it to account. Right now, he will be playing behind a much improved offensive line. You could very well see PJ. I mean, hell, at this point, um, all we need is a game manager at the quarterback position. So, can PJ go out there and do that? Can he can he deliver accurate balls when guys are getting open? Because that's what we weren't seeing. Like going into the season, all I wanted to see, all I asked for from Baker was be average, and he's been below that. Like uh, Baker, Baker's performance thus far has been on par with Sam's performance after his first three games. So can we get can we get a game manager performance out of PJ? If we, we get that, I don't know how many other people have looked at our, our uh, the remaining schedule. It's 12 games left in the season. Our, our schedule is not that difficult. The Rams are not the juggernauts that they were last season. Um, and neither are the Bucs. I forget who – I forget exactly – well, it's the Bucks next week, right? Like, bro, the Bucks yeah, defense is, is strong, but their offense is not as good as it's been in the past. The Falcons are the Falcons. The Bengals have looked terrible. We have the Falcons again. I mean, there are games left on the schedule that we could win with the way that our defense has been playing if we can get some semblance of an offense going. And if P.J. is that guy, I mean, imagine what it would say for Wilkes to come in five games into the season, you're one for it. 
you you're you have your third string QB starting, and the Panthers managed to win a couple of games. Like, oh, like is this? I mean, I'm, I'm optimistic. I, I have I have much more faith in PJ than I do Baker or Sam at this point. And here's the other thing I'll add in here too. Didn't Voke say that just about it was like a do-over on the season now at this point? Basically everyone, not necessarily had to compete for their jobs, but, you know, there was a very real possibility of roster moves. Could it be that Baker just isn't what we thought that he could be and we could need somebody else? I hope. I, I'm, I'm ready to just throw Baker clear out the door. If, if I was in charge, I'd just outright cut him. I'm sorry, and Sam would never come off IR. So it's, it's just how I feel. But, you know, if I can add my two cents on P.J., y'all need to remember P.J. didn't enter the NFL directly for Matt Rule. P.J. was with the Colts for a couple of years on and off their practice mm-hmm. squad. Then he went to the Houston Roughnecks. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers called the XFL office to see if they could sign him in October, like a week after he was signed. But it was blocked because the lead, the XFL said he was already under contract to the Houston Roughnecks. So he stayed in the, uh, he, he stayed with the XFL for that East season. Then the pandemic came and he ended up with rule. You know how all that goes. But um, also you got to remember too, uh, PJ Walker first offensive coordinator was Joe Brady. His second offensive coordinator he played under was was uh, was uh, uh, Jeff Nixon, our running backs coach at the time, who was interim offensive coordinator, and that happened to be the game with Cam. So you know, let's be fair here. You know, PJ may not be the future, and I don't think anybody's claiming he is the future. But for right now, for as it is now. He's the best we got. Uh, Baker Mayfield isn't even a quality NFL quarterback right now. I don't. I, there's nobody in the world who can convince me otherwise. Oh, so, dude, how about this? You can say Baker Mayfield is looking like the worst quarterback in the NFL right now. To me, he is. Uh, there's you, not many. You, you can at least make that argument that that he's at least playing like a player that you would call one of the worst in the NFL. He's had a he's had a QBR rating or quarterback rating like that's like one of the worst in the history of football through f- five games. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, he's been playing he's been playing so bad that everybody even Baker haters know this is ridiculously How bad. about this? I'm more excited about this game because of PJ Walker than I would be That's if- what I'm saying. Uh, yes. if, if Mayfield was yeah. in there. Look, Sideshow yeah. Rob said it. He said if you want a high draft pick, you need to start Baker. Like that's yeah. what the the, the I, problem I, I, is I, this and I wanted to bring this guys up is like not only are you um like kind of essentially upgrading at quarterback which is so ridiculous to say, right? Then you are getting the interim co- you're upgrading at court uh, coach, right? You're upgrading yeah. at coach. You're upgrading at head coach, a guy who's had more success in the NFL than Matt Rule ever has. You're catching a Rams team that has not been that great or has not been that great this year. And then on top of this, this historical statistic, you see this I sent you, Cody? This uh, is yeah, this is, that, is the results. Right the yeah, this is the results of since 2010. And I think the first year is a, the first one's a typo. But uh of interim coaches in their first game, right? And look at this. The last five times uh, interim coaches take it over, they've won. Houston beat Jacksonville last year. Las Vegas beat Denver last year. Uh, Atlanta beat Minnesota in 2020. Washington beat Miami. And not only after that, if you go down and look at this, which is even wilder, let's check the losses. The first loss was 2018, seven and a half point spread. Okay, they didn't cover there. They actually have a pretty historically good chance of covering the spread, too. So, man, you're like, God, how are we going to fire our coach and then get good? But here's, here's the thing. Here's the counter argument to that, man. Like, I trust me, I'm right there with you. But with every reaction, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So, how is the defense going to be affected by this? 
we just got yeah. we essentially just got rid of our our defensive coordinator. You know, we knew. Oh, we didn't essentially. We then. did, and maybe well, well, that's I, an I upgrade too. We, we knew it was going to happen as soon as Matt Rule was out of the building. Those two, Phil Snow and Matt Rule, have been tied together for so long that they're both going to stay together. You know, so I wonder what it's going to do to the defense, especially now that we're missing J.C. Horn, Xavier Woods, and Jeremy Chin. Yeah, let me ask that. Well, so we've been talking about P.J. Walker, but there will be J.C. Horn. They, they want to save him for – you know, they don't want to re-aggravate that injury. Uh, what do you guys think about not J.C. Horn like, from a defensive perspective? Now, I'll say this. Uh, Matthew Stafford has been known to throw some pick sixes, man. Uh, th- this dude will throw some interceptions. So, like, this could have been a breakout game for J.C. in theory. But is there anyone on our defense that you're looking for uh, to capitalize in this game specifically, yeah, yeah. Brian Burns. Brian Burns is going to have to like have a huge game this this week. I mean, the offensive lines like they're they're terrible. The Rams' offensive line's terrible. So like that line, him, Derek Brown, and I think Nick was about to mention it. Frankie Luvu, if he's playing this week, I think he is. I think yep. Woods is going to be playing this week. Yep, We're getting is. a couple guys back. So I mean. Um, it just sucks that J.C. Horn's not going to be there because, to me, that was a really big piece to see, like, to really see, like, if he's a, that true corner. Because, I mean, I know we've he, – this year he's been really, really – he's been playing very, very well. But we've been playing some teams that the receiving – the receiving core is not the greatest. Or, like, Cleveland, they run the ball a lot. Um, New York, they don't really have receivers, the Giants. So, they ran the ball a lot. Um he did play well against the Saints. I mean, but they, they're again, their receivers got hurt. Alave had a huge game. So I, I, I thought this would be a great game to see Horn like really lock in and see what, what was going to happen with him and Cup. But um, yeah, man, I mean, I just think we got to get some pressure on Stafford to, uh, on Sunday because that's going to be, I think that's going to be a, a big thing and then not turning the ball over. I think that's pretty much the game plan. One of the things that I kind of fear, to be honest, this defense is really good, and they've they've demonstrated that a couple times. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to hold the 37 points against them because you, once your offense gets to a certain point, the defense just gets exhausted. Um, but I don't know if you guys have noticed, but we actually have had a couple one-score games or near-one-score games where it was actually – kind of blown by a certain someone literally tackling the receiver before the ball even hit the ground. Um, and I, that's CJ Henderson, by the way. And I get like really worried about that because if you give up mm-hmm. Matthew Stafford is a cannon, that's his whole shtick, right? Um, if you're going to give up either a big play or get caught up in a 70 yard bomb, such that you're, they were down at their own 25 and now they're down at their 25 because you made a stupid penalty, Right. If the offense isn't able to put up any more than what's the most we've scored this year, 24, that could end up being the game, yeah. which would be very – now, that doesn't mean that that's for sure going to happen because, of course, it's only happened two games. There's been five games. You know, it's not like it happens every game. But I, I do worry about that because C.J. Henderson is, is garbage and the d- discipline on this team is not as good as it could be, almost primarily because of him, but there's other elements of it too. Are y'all giving up on – let me ask this. Are y'all giving up on C.J. Henderson? Because I feel like over the past few weeks, uh, I, I hear this more and more that people are like, man, is C.J. getting cooked? C.J. just doesn't have it. C.J.'s a liability in this defense. Are, are y'all kind of agreeing that C.J. Uh, might be a little in over his head? On the surface, I do. But I also want to express a little bit that um, let's all remember Steve Wilkes is running the show now. Um, and, uh, Al Holcomb was right along next to both of them when we, when they took Josh Norman, uh, would move, followed, uh, OBJ all over the field to the point of driving him crazy in New York. Okay. Uh, let's also remember the, 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 for the last three years, we've had, we, we've had a college coach run our defense the college way. And then mm-hmm. the NFL, your best corner lines up against the opposite best receiver 90% of the time. Now, 
for this game, our best to me, our best corner ain't playing. But mm -hmm. the guy we re-signed that claims to be the best, Dante Jackson, today this Sunday is your day. It's put up or shut the fuck up. Okay. That's what you need to do, my man. Put up so, or shut the fuck up. Because so, it's, so, it, it's on you. Yeah, yeah that's right. pickle salty. Dude, I got to say, you know. that, though, to be honest, hey, the only, yeah. it seems to me the only thing Rule did right was the defense. The so, defense hold on, let, good me, this let me, uh, I know, I know JD was here, but JD, go ahead, bro. Yeah, I, I, just, just two things, like, I, I want to point out um, for my own observations and opinions, because prior to uh, the last game, I was like, Terrace was trash, so on and so forth. But then you see the dude actually get an opportunity, and he, he looks like he's pretty damn like he, he he could go on to be a pretty damn good pick. With Henderson, I'm watching him, and thus far I feel like he's a guy. He, he's a young corner who doesn't fully trust his abilities or the team around him, because a lot of his errors is just it's, it's stuff. I feel like good coaching will be able to get out of him, and you will see the the player he could be or will be you got to think the uh penalty against the browns if if man would have legitimately just turned his head around he would have seen woods coming over he was possibly seen a ball short oh let me just step up out of the way that's an easy pick for woods like that's trusting your team it's trusting the system um was it week three the olave catch for the saints that set them up for a touchdown Again, bro, just get your head around. At the very least, you can get your arm up, deflect the ball. If you're athletic enough, talented enough, you might be able to contort your entire body and get an interception. I feel like those are things that Wilkes and, and the coaching staff that I hope Wilkes uh, is able to put around these players, that's stuff that right. you, can, you can coach out of them. And then Wilkes, uh, Coach Wilkes saying that he wants, every, he wants to use every player that's out there. I hope to see more out of Terrace. I hope I'm wrong when it comes to his his uh, production and his abilities. Um, so yeah, I, I, as far as like being out or off of Henderson, I think he, it's just growing pains. Like he'll he'll get better, and and we will have like but two. People legit are tired of of saying that, though. You know what I'm saying? Like at this point, is like here is that Wilkes uh, man, um, Holcomb came out and said exactly what you said that this is technique stuff this is when the ball gets in the air guys get nervous and they don't trust their technique a lot right and that and the thing is is that wilkes has been the secondary coach though so it's not like all of a sudden him being the head coach should continue to help on the secondary that uh clearly but i did hear one thing that was really interesting going to our jay stew um interview this week that's related to this is that they were talking to, it was Mark Sanchez that was talking, which, by the way, not the best football player, but fantastic announcer and, like, interview. He was great today. And it was on Callan, Cow Callan Cowherd. And he said one of the things that's tough for these co for coaches and teams is when you tell people to do all the right things, you get them believing, they go do the right things, and then they don't get the good results. So he said like winning early actually helps develop trust. And we heard Jonathan Stewart. We asked him what was one of the hardest things that, and he said that uncertainty. It's like, man, we we all believe that you you practice this way, you do this this way, you go out, execute, you know, you do this, and then you don't get the results you want. He said that was one of the psychologically the hardest things to deal with. And that kind of, I think, relates to the C.J. Henderson thing, that he hasn't been doing it the right way the entire time. But at some point, the results have to meet. And C.J. just has it. Man, C.J. is not bad. He just makes one giant mistake every game. Dude, 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 one dude, giant I mistake. Too. I, I saw him up here in New England, man. And Tony and Cody, I think you both remember that voice message I sent you. And C.J. Henderson, he looks great in practice. Yeah, he's going to do that one stupid thing. But at the same time, he's had one season with Jacksonville. He's had half a season with us. You know, so let's see what he does this year. You know, and at the same time, too, corners sometimes, doesn't it take a little bit for them to get to get acclimated? Yeah, yeah. people forget you know, how many growing pains James Bradbury had. Yeah, and Josh, and, and Josh people, Norman. People want to look back finally on James Bradbury now. 
when you had success with other teams. But James Bradbury had some moments where it was like, dude, uh, what are you yes. doing out there? Yeah, he so, was atrocious you know, some days. <laughs> he really was. He There's times I can remember him getting burned and me screaming, fool, you ain't no second round pick. I mean, he, but you learn. He learns. He goes and he, he goes on. You know, yeah. you got to learn, and, you know. I it's do, those who don't learn you worry about. You know? I do think that there's to, um, to have some optimism yeah. about yeah, uh, Steve Wilkes basically being able to kind of turn his trajectory around yeah. and get him on the right track. I mean, Steve Wilkes is a very highly touted defensive backs coach. Everyone that's around him swears by him. But there's some more injuries uh, that uh, I do think that bear mentioning because that. You know, we're talking about C.J. Henderson. Right now, his list is questionable. Steve Wilkes seems to think that he'll play, but his list is questionable. Why does he keep doing that? Um, and then Frankie Louvu is also listed as questionable. So, right. I mean, really, this might uh, be the one matchup where our offense actually has to do the making up for our defense, if we're not able to to stop the run and, and shut down Cooper Cup on offense, that's well, no not hurts. What we have to, with our with our offense with our with the team that we're playing, we can't rely solely on our defense. Right, that, right. That right. defense is going to take the ball away from us in good field position if we aren't careful. It's just right. going to happen. So if our offense doesn't perform, we can't rely on just our defense. Uh, uh, Vashti Hurts was on WFNZ today, as she is on, on Fridays from 10 to 2, and she looked at the injury report when it came out, and she said, well, let's be real. She said, Henderson will play. Frankie will play. Uh, and, you know, she went down the list, and she said, she, she said uh, um, Dante Jackson would definitely play. She said a lot of these Robbie will play unless he's still sick. And she said, but she went down the list because she said some of these folks get added to the injury report if for for the littlest things. He's you know, and that's just how the NFL is now. And if a coach has to for for any reason they're not practicing, they have to be put somewhere. If you know, yeah. either the day off or on the injury report. It's crazy because like it's crazy like for fantasy football purposes, like questionable. They don't do probable anymore. So, like, questionable, like, kills me because you're just like, you won't know until literally close to Is game that time. what it is? I've been wondering because yeah. questionable used to mean a lot worse than it does now. Yeah, exactly, Tony. Yeah. So, I mean, they took away probable. I don't know. How long has it been? A few, quite a few years. Has it? I, bet, I feel like I wish I. All right. Now it all makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Now that you say that, that does make sense. I do remember probable. Being yeah, listed on 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 the well, I don't know where the hell that went. Um, yeah, it was like seventy five percent. Probably was like seventy five percent chance they're gonna play twenty five percent, and then questionables fifty fifty, doubtfuls seventy five the other way. So it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to go to Eric. Get Eric in on this conversation. Eric, do you think this is going to be an offensive game or a defensive game? Which side of the football is going to be more responsible for bringing home the W? If we do get the W, I think everyone said our our offense is going to have to make some big plays because I know the defense, I know Rams defense isn't like at the top of the league, but they do have some big names, it, it, big names like Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey, and, and and I believe they're going to have to allow PJ to be aggressive. We're expecting this happen, and, but it is what it is. A win is a win. Any questions? Yeah. Hey, who's got the? We did a good job the executing today. Oh, is that the soundboard tone? Yeah. I don't know what the hell that was. I didn't play that shit. Sorry, Eric. Go ahead. Yeah. Nah, it's all good, but not nah, obvious <laughs> defense special teams. Knock them dead. <laughs> Tony got the soundboard. But, but more so, I think the offense will definitely need to be aggressive. It is what it is. A win I, is a win. Any questions? I, I, I just want to see how much Ben McAdoo will allow the playbook to be expanded. And uh, it, because he's fine for his job too, and I want to see what he can do when he has full control. Because I, I, because I feel like Matt Rules kept him limited a little bit, and I want to see what happens when Ben McAdoo can do his thing. Yeah, 
Let me ask you all this. Is anyone like excited specifically to see what Al Holcomb does with this defense? Because I know we've been talking about Phil Snow and the 3-3-5, but I kind of have been seeing more 4-3 on the field ever since we started to voice those criticisms. But I still feel like I see a lot of that 3-3-5 when we're in uh, like third down situations, which is, which is weird to me. Um, the, what kind of difference – do you expect from this defense? And do you think that we're going to see Brandon Smith more now that there's no more Phil Snow and no more Matt Rule? Yeah. I hope. Uh, we're going like to gonna hope. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I like to hope Brian Burns is more of a pass rusher and that they stop dropping him off on third down. That's been uh, uh, that's been really annoying me lately it is, is that he's not – he's not – that Phil Snow is not like – have him be that edge rusher that we drafted him to be. Uh, you took yeah. the words clean out of my mouth. Like, <laughs> it, it, like so through, through rules tenure, I wholeheartedly agree. I think a lot of people would agree when they say that Snow was easily looked at as the best coach. But this season in particular, I don't know what got into his head, but I was absolutely sick of seeing Burns drop into the flats on obvious passing downs. You're taking away the team's most yeah. established pass rusher. And it, it, that, that, like, it is egregious. But with Holcomb taking over, with uh, Wilkes taking the, the um, by being elevated to the, the head coaching position, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting to see a lot more four-man pass rushes when, when teams do get into obvious passing downs. Um, Brandon Smith, um, Cody, like great minds think a lot because that was immediately what I like. If Luhu can't go, I'm imagining that they're especially with Smith having had dealt with an injury earlier in this season, trying to get him up to speed. So, in my head, if Luhu can't go, this is a great opportunity for Brandon Smith to step out there and, and show what he can do with, with his God given talent and with this deep. I mean, the deep Holcomb. Is more. I, I said it jokingly, and I kind of believe it at the same time. Like you could put, you could make me the defensive coordinator of the Carolina Panthers, and for the amount of talent that's on that defense, I would look like I would look like a genius. So <laughs> honestly, yeah. I feel like Snow was that, that you talk about college coach in the NFL. I was absolutely sick of seeing the three three five. Like there's no place for it outside of a third and twenty plus. 20 plus yard situation. Like, there's no reason for there to be a 3 3 5 out. If you want to get more guys in the secondary, just go to a dime package. Give me the four man rush, and then you can drop everybody else back in the pass coverage. And I, I do I, expect to see an improvement on the defense, even though the defense has been the strength of the team thus far. I see. Yeah, you know that. Hey, uh, hold on one minute, Pickle. Let me put a pause on the conversation and thank Michael Davis. For the twenty-five dollar love bomb, you know we appreciate this big time. Uh, if you'd like to, you can uh, now join the C Three Panther Podcast Super Fan Club for a dollar ninety-nine a month. You get custom emojis, custom badges. We're doing giveaways all the time, and I even found out that we can upload videos only for uh, subscribers. Don't know how much we'll be doing that, but that shows you what kind of extra perks. You can have for only $1.99 a month, man. So consider hitting that join button and being a part yeah. of the C3 Super Fan Club. I wanted to uh, first say thank you for everybody who has done that. Uh, thank you, Michael Davis, for uh, hitting us with the super chat. It's been an incredible week for us. Let's not just make it a bump because of bad, a bad news bump. But we did, like, we streamed four or five days, four days in a row. We had a bunch of stuff going on. We had Jay Stu. We have fake Matt Rule. We did like 30,000 views in four days or something crazy. It's like our biggest numbers in a, in a while. We appreciate everybody. And the Friday free-for-all has been a big part of that because we've developed this big community of people that really are invested uh, in the conversation with each other. So I appreciate that. Did you hit the Manscaped read? Uh, not yet. I normally do that uh, an hour in. So we're almost there. We can do okay. that. Uh, we can do that We can do that in, uh, here in just a few minutes. I'll, I'll go around. around uh, Kind of final thoughts on Al Holcomb here, maybe seeing Brandon Smith, and then yeah. we'll get to a word from our sponsors. Go ahead, Pickle, or whoever yeah, I, wants 
Right. And, uh, I, whoever wanted to go next. I, I, I would like to see a lot of the rookies. Um, my pers- I mean, I just would. I'd like to see a lot of them get some playing time just because uh, if they were a big drop off and guys already there, that'd be different. But I don't think they are. Uh, I really don't think they are. I think, I think honestly, I think you could play uh, Cade Mays over um, Michael Jordan or uh, Cam Irving. Uh, I think you could play a, a lot of different ones like that that it normally don't even get active, but should be. Um, you know, uh, uh, I think Kyle Holcomb's going to do real good. I really do. I, I, I think so. I think he's going to blitz some, but I, I don't think he's going to blitz. I think he's, I think he ain't going to blitz every down. I think he's going to try. I expect, as somebody else mentioned, I expect to see Brian Burns really take good use of those uh, poor uh, pass blockers by the uh, by the Rams. Um, yeah. My last thing I wanted to say: subscriber shame to the folks in the chat. 135 people watching and 65 likes. Is it that hard to hit that like button, y'all? Come on. <laughs> I yeah. Santa okay. Pickle is disappointed in you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Subscribe right. or shame, damn it. Hit them thumbs up. We may not have the voice that makes the voice with us, but Panther Pickle will do just fine. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, <laughs> hit that notification bell. Single time, the C3 Panthers podcast goes live. Uh, Senate, let me get you in on this, bro. Uh, what do you think of this defense looks like with the questionables? You know, does it look different under Al Holcomb? What are you thinking, man? Uh, well, I, I don't expect it to be better only because I think the defense was doing really good so far this year i think we've only given up um 20 or more points twice which is the 26 on cleveland and the 37 with uh the 49ers not even all 37 with the 49ers are from the offense right so i don't expect it to necessarily be better obviously with the injuries too you have to factor that in um i am interested to see if they clean up some of the discipline issues because in my opinion that's the number one problem with the panthers both sides Um, you know, fumbles, drop passes, tip balls, uh, unnecessary pass interference, blowing plays. Those all have the the same thing in common, which is their undisciplined football. And I'd be very interested to see if, if Wilkes and Holcomb can actually fix that problem. Because if they can fix that problem, I could see this defense easily being as good as the Buccaneers defense. It's something that, uh, something that that the Panthers posted is a little, a little caption of, Wilkes talking to the team, and he made a comment. If, I, if I'm remembering it correctly, it was the speed of the pack is determined by the speed of the leader. That yeah. statement alone, I mean, that alone, will, will, it, it gives me reason to believe that this team as a whole is going to get better. The, the, the I mean, you could take it as a shot towards Rule. The speed of the pack is determined by the leader. Rule was not an NFL head coach. Wilkes is. So, I mean, yeah, and Wilkes' first stint, you know, with uh, Arizona was kind of – it's unfair to judge him on that because that team was completely dysfunctional. I mean, they drafted a first-round quarterback two years in a row. Like, who does that? Um, yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's just complete he nonsense. Was, he they, was brought in there to be a patsy kind of, it felt like. Exactly. Like, unless he just turned this team into something that was supposed to be awesome, which no one expected – like, I mean, they moved on from him after one year. And to be honest, he won three games that year. And there was some stat, and I forget, I wish I would have wrote down the number when I heard it. But the Arizona Cardinals made something like 480 roster moves that year. And so, what? yeah, I mean, it was, like a, it was like an insane amount of roster moves. So they were, like, funneling that practice squad the entire time. They're picking dudes up off the street, essentially. So, um, you know, and... So I just I, I almost say this is if you could get three wins with Josh Rosen and a terrible team, we should have been able to get more out of that with Sam Darnold, a best our better offensive line and a decent defense, but we didn't. Let me tell you, it has the makings of a great story. The guy from Charlotte went to West Mecklenburg, you know, went to Johnson C. Smith. Uh, he has, you know, 
He's been an NFL head coach before under terrible circumstances. It's like it's hard not to pull for the guy. And um, in a little while, we're we'll get other news that's kind of on the other end of Steve Wilkes doing well. But um, Tony, you mentioned some of those sponsors. So uh, l- let's double it up. I'm going to let you take uh, uh, our good friends over at Manscaped. And then I will do the prize picks. But why don't you crazy tell way, about- crazy way to intro that with let's double it up. But in case that ever becomes <laughs> the case, <laughs> you want to make sure you look good and you are ready for the part. And you can do that with the best male grooming products around Manscaped. Sponsor this show. I think we've got them secure a contract coming on Monday for the entire season. So that's fantastic. Let's go. I know. I told you the C3 Panthers podcast is doing great things, but you can great get great products like this. My favorite thing is this toiletry bag that comes in every kit's high end le- leather bag. Just looks masculine. Always love when my wife who says I never pack anything and I just put all of my toiletries in and I look super cool and fresh doing it. You can get the lawnmower 4.0, which is the one, right? This is the one so you don't nick your ball sack. But also even cooler than that is, or not cooler than that. This Well, why do I always quantify shit? I've never figured out. I'm always quantifying. But you get cool products like this to keep you fresh and clean. Crop preserver, crop reviver. What this does, cool. it's ball deodorant. I'm telling you, your balls will thank you. 25 per, uh, 20% off if you use the promo code Panthers and you get free shipping worldwide. 20% off of your order if you use the promo code Panthers and you get the free shipping and you can get this cool gear. Your balls will thank you. Your lady will thank you. And we will thank you if you use that promo code Manscaped.com. We thank them for their support. Let's go. Oh, yeah. And then now we're going to get to our our other sponsor and we use this next sponsor to break down the matchup and kind of look, uh, you know, look at kind of what the numbers are. Look at what, you know, what some of the more official numbers surrounding this game are. And, uh, there's, there's been some, you know, some interesting updates that we'll definitely get to, but I want to welcome our sponsor prize picks and listen, there you know you can not only make a little bit of money with prize picks, but check out what they'll do. Right, they'll give you a free entry like this. You know, to, uh, to all of our NBA fans, you know, normally I'm not big on basketball, right? But when you have an opportunity to make some dollars, dude, that makes it even better. They're letting you pick Steph Curry. Pro- they have his projected at point point. It's a free square. It's a free square. square. Do you remember when they did when they when they opened up uh, the football season? They did this with Tom Brady, right? So Tom Brady just had to complete one pass, and you got one of the entries. But the way Prize Picks works is kind of like on a multi-entry system. You put in multiple picks, right? Put in five dollars, get three picks, get twenty-five dollars. I got to do the math. It's always it's dependent on the pick you make, but it's really user friendly. Promo code C3. And on Tuesday, I think it's Tuesday is when the NBA pops off and you get that free square. So basically right here, you could just make a double pick and you only got to get one pick right. But you know you want to go big time. They had a Flex Friday one today where you could get a free entry of $15 and if you lost it and you did it today. So they have all these kind of cool specials. The thing is, though, is that this game probably isn't a lot to pick on at this one. Let's see. Who you got, Cody? You want to go so, ahead and leave that Steph up there. Yeah, there you go. Boom. That's a freebie. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely leaving that Steph up there. So these P.J. Walker numbers are interesting. They have a, a 205 passing yards. That's pretty You high. know what? I feel it's funny you say hi, Tony, because I'm you know, like P.J. might just throw the bitch downfield and air it out. I, oh, I'm kind of feeling I'm kind of feeling OK on P.J. Walker. And to everyone on the panel, I go the am, I, I, am I wrong? Of course you would, Nick. <laughs> Listen, Tony, do you actually watch that game I sent you? I haven't gotten a chance to watch that game. I've seen him play in the past. I know the dude can sling it around, but come on, man. It's like, I feel like this. You should be looking at this Christian McCaffrey number. 
here's the thing, man. He's definitely going to have over 60 yards rushing. I, th- I think of it like this is the context of the game, right? Like we got to try to think of it, just not individual players, but here think of like what has happened this past week. We have fired uh, ultimately entire staff, but we kept the offensive coordinator. We heard Steve Wilkes mention that they needed to do better at running the ball. Right. Like, I mean, he just, and he didn't, he wasn't, he, he didn't throw them under the bus for not running it enough. Like he didn't just say, he said context of the game, but he says, you just got to be able, you got to run the ball some. So I think the Panthers okay. are going to come here and try to, I'd be interested in that PJ rushing numbers. Another one I like. I think so. Oh, that's that's, that's what yards. I was about to get at. That's what I think wouldn't, that's safer than the passing yard personally. Wouldn't that make sense though? Then bring PJ in. He's known to be a, a more mobile quarterback than Baker Mayfield is. You know, Definitely. he stretches, the, oh, but that's, he stretches the field better than Baker Mayfield does. That's a, you know, that's it's, a, and on top of that, the last time he played was the week. Oh, that is wasn't fantasy that the week school. After it's not rushing. That we cut. It. What it wasn't it like the week before he played where we cut Joe Brady, or was that right after? Uh, like it was right it around was, the time where we cut. It was Joe the Arizona Brady. game right? Then you we, guys say we that, did that before. We did that. We fired Joe Brady before the Arizona game. Right before. So we never got to see Cam Newton and Joe Brady together. No, he got he got the short end of the stick. No. I, I, every time, yeah. And everybody, everybody, did he though? Down on Joe Brady. Yeah. Everybody was like, "Oh, this." Oh, I'm still down on him, but it yeah. was the he dysfunction. What he was doing, dude, he had no chance. Neither does McAdoo. Don't say McAdoo don't have no chance. What I would say is this: is that we just didn't get to see what you told you sold me on Joe Brady being awesome, and then I never got to see him coach Cam. Like that was like when you guys said we're getting Matt Rule, and then you said, "Oh, this is his offensive coordinator, Joe Brady. He just won, had this crazy offense at LSU or wherever it was." And then I'm going, "Oh man!" And Cam is going to come back. We're going to have him with Cam, and then they cut Cam. I didn't get to see it. I then you're know, trying to tell dude. me they didn't come back, and even he got fired before then. Anyway, that wasn't rushing yards. It was eleven and a half fantasy score, which I don't know how they calculate fantasy score in this. And Five receptions. There you go. Boom. That one's good. So I've learned I can only pick one Panther. No, uh, you can't gonna... pick uh, the same Panther twice, and you have to pick from different teams. So you could pick multiple <sighs> Panthers, but you then have to also make one pick from another team, which Steph Curry one should count. So we oh, could okay. do Christian McCaffrey and PJ, but we can't do Christian McCaffrey twice. Now, what about receptions? You don't think it's receptions? could be more than five because i just feel like I, I actually feel like that would be less for christian because pj walker when he's throwing the ball he's throwing downfield like this guy is not great at the check downs at the short little intermediate passes what what's uh dj's at that rush attempts dj yeah DJ Moore, last that... time yeah get the over on the 53 and a half 53 and yep. a half wait Last, last, dude, last time DJ, last time DJ and PJ played together, dude, they I think it was like 115 yards or something like that. That DJ yeah, got, so I definitely go the over. Oh, you might have just persuaded me on that, Nick. Well, also DJ is not playing particularly well this year, and I know everybody wants to put the blame on Rule or put the blame on Baker, but like he dropped like a 40 yard bomb last week that was right in his bread basket, and that's like the third time he's done that this year. Like DJ is not up to par with DJ Moore of the previous seasons. Yeah, but I have a hard he time has that had the drops. Him, I what all right, but, do you like the yards more or do you like the receptions? How many receptions? Four and wow, a half. Four and a half? Wow, you're right. Ooh. And I like the other was the the other one we haven't talked about was the uh, Christian McCaffrey rushing attempts. It's 14 and a half. Mm, I think I like DJ Moore's receptions. I got More screwed by know. DJ last week. I don't know. It was four last week. Maybe get so. It. Look, maybe well, actually, maybe, he did. maybe okay. it's just wishful thinking. But I kind of think PJ Walker might need, uh, you know, he might, or uh, rather, DJ Moore might need a guy like PJ Walker to kind of jumpstart his season. You know, let him let him get out and go downfield knowing he has a guy that's going to be able to put the ball out to him. 
You know what um, I think is going to be one of the first or early plays on this offense with PJ to try to get him loosened up a little. I would not be surprised if the first play of the game was a slant to DJ Moore. Something we have not called a lot this season. Play action, play action deep ball. Well, see, that one's so low percentage, though. You want to give a guy something that, like, where you just shake. You remember when Cam used to be so nervous when he came in the game? He'd be praying before the game and this. And it was just better if I almost just wanted to run Cam the first play of every game. Just get hit one time, and then he would be, and then he would just it would cool off. I would Yo, just go a high percentage that. throw I to used DJ. To say the same thing. Like, why don't they just call just one run to play for Cam? Like, just one time. He seemed to play so much better after he had that contact. Yeah, like, he just needs some dirt on his jersey. Like, man, oh man. Like, how can we see this, but the coaches don't see it? I know. Yet. He would be praying. You remember that? Like, he would pray. <laughs> You're like, oh, God, Tony come on. Tony, and he would always Tony, throw, like, watch. a missile over somebody's head on the first play. You know what it is? Yeah. He's always been into fashion, man. So, so he got a little bit of dirt on his jersey, and now he plays pissed off because it's like, man, yeah. he got dirt on my jersey. I know. Now I got to kill you. All right, I like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like that DJ number there. And I would be interested in that Christian McCaffrey rushing attempts. But I can see how you guys wouldn't be – super hype about it yeah, five receptions for McCaffrey too I could see that yeah but I, I I just I don't know man I think if it's receptions it's a lot of underneath stuff you know Christian's not not going deep you ain't trying and to get I, away from Donald Donald like uh, what's his name Aaron Donald Donald, uh, Donald. yeah no that's, that's, that's a good one point the, that's one of the reasons why I don't think PJ is going to have over 200 yards passing unless it's like some uh chunk plays yeah because I, I mean, with, down thirty, with, with Coach Will saying, um, like, just doing a better job of running the ball, and on top of that, saying that he wanted to utilize like everybody that was on the team. I might be wrong, uh, because I read an article I want to say yesterday that stated that through five games, Foreman only had seven carries, which is insane to contemplate. So moving mm-hmm. forward, I mean, every any no matter how good Ooh, that's a good is, question. Are they going to hand it off to multiple people in this game? Yeah, like no matter who the QB is, every quarterback's best friend is a solid run game. So you have CMC like healthy. You have 14 40. and a half temps. I'm telling you. Don't forget, I'm, folks, if you guys are going to use prize picks, be sure to use the promo code C3. And your first time you sign up, your first deposit entry, you get 100% bonus if you use that code. And look at this. If you hit both of these. Right here. You got a free play this week, guys. Yeah. You can play that Steph Curry and that, and you hit that. You put in $20, you triple. Look how easy it is. You got to add one more. Who's What's yeah. the Rams look like? Yeah, I'm, I'm about to check it out. Talk while I uh, pull it Okay, up. so, all right. So, um, so, really, what we were looking at on the offensive side of the ball is, like, how many – I almost want to think, is it volume? What's the volume of pass to run that we're going to have? And if that if that's the case – so, say it's, like, a more of a balanced attack where you're going to the run game a lot. There's probably, what, 40 plays on offense that you're going to get? And so, five catches to DJ. Like, where is the the kind of ball going to be spread around at? And then you got to kind of think this is either it's going to be like a heavy run game with explosive chunk passing plays, or it's going to be a lot of underneath crap all day trying to dink and dunk. So you got to kind of like try to hope you can almost see the way the game unfolds when you think about this. Yeah. And our defense uh, is so banged up, dude. I would be interested in all of these numbers over here. I haven't hit it yet, but you can also pick Panthers defense. They're projected at two and a half sacks Ooh. right now. Oh, the the Rams haven't been playing good uh, on their offensive line. Remember um, how many pressure San Francisco got on them? Yeah, it was like yeah, yeah. some sort of insane, like twenty. I mean, it was like thirty pressures or some crap like that. So Tony, could I do that? The Pan- DJ Moore and the Panthers defense. I think so. I think okay, that's so, Steph Curry one because you have to have two different teams. Yeah, you can't yeah, pick yeah. the player twice, and they can't both be from the same team when you only do two picks. So I think that Steph Curry gets you out of here. 
But really, what you kind of want to do is try to do the threesome and you get the free foursome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And turn that 20 um, into 200. They have Cooper Cup at 95 and a half receiving Don't yards. bet against him. Yeah, dude, that's what I'm saying. Do like, not that, bet against that. that. Actually, that almost... no. Are you guys telling me that uh, J.C. Horn's not playing? Yeah, no yeah. J.C. Oh, yeah. You take the over on that. Or the more. <laughs> the yeah, I think more, Cooper Cup's yeah. caught like nine passes in every game this year. Yeah, look at the – click the little bars. You see those little bars yeah, in the yeah, top? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I bet oh, you. Oh yeah, uh, other, every other game other than Arizona. Atlanta. Yeah, other what happened than in Arizona? Arizona? I wonder what happened there. Rested over a hundred. Does anybody know what happened in that game? Like, it was no, a really low scoring game. It only ended up being like twenty to twelve. Right, and it didn't um, Arizona did that? Did they win that at the last second? Didn't they? Or did yeah, they not? No, remember they, that? They were trying, and then they kind of they dropped the two points or something. Like Fifty-five times in that game, which was ridiculous. Mm. It's interesting. I would not. I'm not ever betting against Cooper Cup this season, dude. I made my mistake already on that. What does Robbie Anderson's 35? stat look like here? Because I think he, you know, he's kind of the speed guy on the team. And if PJ is going downfield, I wouldn't be surprised if he caught like a big old, you know. 30 plus yard chunker what's that here before you go on let's stick with the rams real quick because i think that number was 35 i think it was around 33 or 35 yards uh, but he hasn't really done much you know so it's kind of hard he's like it's a boomer bust you either get it or you don't 255 passing yards against the panthers defense banged up mm, interesting matthew stafford one interception god if we just had jc horn we need J.C. Horn and Chin. We could I'm win this really, game. We can't. That's what we needed. We needed those two guys, and we might be able if, to win if, this game. Does he not, have more interceptions thrown than touchdowns? I, 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 I think so. I mean, if don't you think at least somebody's game. going to get an interception if if we get pressure on him? I mean, his offensive line is really bad. Surely he's going to force the ball somewhere. Frank he has got one thrown, last week or the other week. So. Matthew Stafford has thrown five touchdowns and seven interceptions so far. Yeah, I, yeah would, I, that would, might, I would. But we don't have a secondary. A Who's going to catch it? Uh, I don't Who's going to catch it? Dante? Jason Horn. Uh, Dante. Either Dante or Dante. Dante. CJ I, 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 Henderson. He ain't caught shit. Yeah. Has he even had his interception, yeah. interception yet? Those so. tend to be the interceptions that, that Dante get when, when the QB is throwing while yep. he's under pressure. He just yeah, like that random. Dante's like Roman. That is a Dante. This if if I'm I put not gonna my lie, money on a... Tony, I'm kind of liking that. That right. that I and but, so it. look, Arizona was the only outlier for the Rams because he has thrown an interception in every single game this year, other than the Arizona. Game. They beat so, us uh, though, dude. Remember, uh, T. <laughs> yeah, Haynes. I know T. Haynes is on the practice no squad. They could easily br use him Sunday. If they need what are you gonna do? You're not. Are you really gonna go over two and a half sacks? No, I'm. I'm not even sure. I might take that off. I'm not even okay. sure if I want to do okay. that one yet. I I would what, take what, that what off. What would y'all put? Do y'all think the Panthers are good for more or less? I tell you that. Do you remember how much Wilkes blitzed? A lot. A lot. Burns, Burns is going to finish this game with at least two by himself. I can see uh, Brown getting one. Like, I don't dislike it. They're, they're, Here's they're, the they're other thing that we got to like they're, they're, The Rams' offensive line is what the Panthers' offensive line has been the last couple of <laughs> That's years. That's a good that analogy. True. Their center, if I'm not mistaken, is the he's, he's, he was like the fourth center on the depth chart. The starter got yeah. hurt. Backup got hurt. He was yeah. on the practice squad. So then the third Cam center got hurt, and they elevated him. Cam Irving. Yeah. Cam Irving is getting some chatter on the trading block to be honest so because we don't use him and he would be an upgrade to some teams bro that's what they have on their offense they have that right now. They, they have, that's what i thought they, <laughs> have, <laughs> a bunch of, they have khalil's um you know, i can't remember which which one was the left tackle which khalil right. brother was the left tackle oh right. matt, uh, matt, matt, matt matt they the have worst. matt khalil at that, left dude. tackle they have uh, a damn paradise at center they have uh, Michael Jordan at left guard. They they have the talent on their offensive line right now is exactly what the hell the Panthers have been fielding. 
prior to this season, this season, if there's any game in which this defensive line wants to get some confidence, wants to get some some energy, like a game in which the defensive line can take over, it's this one. Yeah, I, I, so now I've got more across the board. Tony, are you telling me this will go or should I just try it? I got Matthew I think it Stafford. Will. If you I'm like it, I think it. it'll go through. Yeah, I, I got I got DJ Moore at more than four and a half receptions. I got the Panthers defense at more than two and a half sacks. And I got Matthew Stafford for more than an INT. And then I you got don't the think staff. This is, then you got the yeah, staff. And, oh yeah, and I, I think got it will go free. through even without Steph because you got um uh oh. Oh, I can't cut yeah, I, I can't combine defensive and offensive. So I, I'm, I'm going to have to either axe. So you got to get rid of the Panthers defensive one. Yeah. Then, yeah or DJ Moore. The... You could get rid of DJ Moore. I would uh, get rid I of think... DJ Moore, man. No, really? I think DJ. Now I want to find I another DJ... one. I was so tempted by that $200. Dude, I, really, I know, <laughs> man. That's what... Come on, but, let's but look I, around. I have to find another team then, right? Okay, well, let's look around. All right, let's do it. Yeah, I mean, DJ had what I think the last time they played the Rams, uh, I think he had seven catches, 76 yards. So, I mean, it's, I like it's that close. Cousins right off the bat. Why? Kirk Cousins playing the Saints. Oh, no, as he played, I thought he was playing, playing the Saints. Miami. Miami. Oh, yeah. Mm, okay. Jimmy I thought it was Garoppolo Saints, right. at 230 uh, against Atlanta. Oh, but he oh, yeah, hasn't yeah, been so, really. Uh, yeah, like yeah the, Vi- the Vikings Slow are down. four and one. Y'all know that the Vikings are four Burrow. and one. I didn't realize the Vikings that are the really four day. and one. Yes, they are four yeah. and one. Mm, I like that Aaron Zach Rogers, Wilson uh, number. Dude, I like Aaron Rodgers' number. <sighs> he screwed me last week. <laughs> You're playing hurt, Zach. No, no, no. Well, I mean, he missed it by 10 yards, and he had two batted passes down at the end. At the can end you do game. baseball? I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do everything, man. They do, they do baseball. They do MMA. Dodgers, can you pick the winner or no? Or do you have to pick a player? No, it's player. It's, this Players. Is, uh, this is daily fantasy sports, and that is how they get it to be that. Oh, they even got that. There we go. Um, Dude, they even have a CS and go. Wow. It's yeah, everything. Pri- it's like the coolest thing ever. Dota. Dude, they have. Let's go back to football what, or because I don't know anything that? about baseball right now. <laughs> what is it? NFL H1. 1H. What is that? Huh? What, what, um, NFL. What is yeah. What is that? I couldn't even tell you. So here's uh, the thing that we got to remember, too, about this weekend. First, first half. half. Oh, Austin. it's first half. Ooh, this. Ooh, I didn't know they had this first half first stats. First half. Interesting, like that. Let's look at some, uh, some, some yeah. rushing yards. This is still first half rushing yards. Yep, I don't mind that. Dalvin against Miami. I could see, uh, Nick Chubb, Nick Chubb. versus New England 45 and a half. All right, so think about that. That means he's gonna have a 90 yard game. New England stopped Detroit to held them to a goose egg last week, but I bet you Nick Chubb. Look at Nick Chubb's stats. I don't think he's had under 100 yards this season in a game. He hasn't. He's been kicking ass. I would definitely he, take the over on that. There's only been one where he failed to do that. He's like a. He's going to have an incredible I season, don't, dude. I don't think you could mess up if you go to the Bills Chiefs game and see and take an over on that. I like feel like on anything. Just, on anything. <laughs> yeah, on anything. <laughs> Oh, I forgot that the oh, Bills. Let's look at that. Let's no. get out of the first half, though. I don't like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It makes me nervous. I, I, I mean, I, that's going to be a, a heavyweight matchup: the Chiefs and the Bills. Is that I, my, what night is that? I think it's uh, just go Sunday Sunday after sort, sort, sort by the dude, team. Dude. Let's do. Look, dude, let's look. They have jo- they have Josh Allen. Look, they have Josh Allen at three hundred and a half passing wow. yards. And they have Mahomes at 299 and a half. <laughs> Good night. I would say yes on both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, All right, so I'm telling I... you right now, I would go over on that Chubb, man. The the Chubb, that's an easy pick. Against New England, man. Look, uh, here but you don't been, mess with you don't mess with season. Bill Belichick. Yeah. Bill Belichick but, always takes away your best player. 
Belichick, man. Like, I, I feel very confident in him, like, purposely scheming to force the Browns to throw the ball. Yeah, the like, game. that is the way you beat yeah. the Browns. Hey, Josh Allen has better yeah, receivers than Patrick too. Mahomes has got right now. I still like Matt Stafford's number. Good Lord. Got to remember, too, Belichick drafted Brissett, so he's firmly aware of how yeah. bad of a quarterback he is. And he'll he's gonna dare him to throw. Are you gonna go big time and do one more? I don't there know, you go. Man, I'm tempted. That's what I'm you ought to do, go. dude. Just see what the two. money would be. See what the it's, money would be if you added the Mahomes. It, to. Added don't do it, one? Tony. Don't do it, Tony. I just want to see what it would be. Can you not? Up, oh, up. Oh. So two hundred. The same? Oh no so way! You, you take can't. one out then. Yeah, they must have a limit then of how many could do five. Oh, it's because of that free square a bit. Probably. So okay, right now. Oh man, that's a rich. No, that's what I would this, do. When I, when but I, I can't believe you're really yards. going over on the passing yards in this. That was so nerve wracking. You don't think you guys just yeah, think it's going like to be a, a slug fest? Yeah. If anyone can yeah. do it, though, it'd be Josh yeah. Allen. Yeah. 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 Right, I'd, go know, for it. I'd go. For but it. you know what? To show off something else that uh, uh, that Prize Picks does, you can do flex pay. So even if you don't get all of them correct, if you get so if I get three correct, uh, you would get one it, and a half it's a, times. It's a, it's a one and a half time payout. If I get all four correct, it's five times the payout. So I could still win a hundred dollars for twenty bucks. I know, but you want to go power play, bro? <sighs> yeah. You believe in it? Swing for the fence. Come on, man. We got some money. Fuck it. I'm on one. There you go. <laughs> Let's go. Because you got this. Really, this is a three game one right here. You yeah. know what I'm saying? This is a three. We just got to hit three. Wait, what does Curry have to do? More than a point? It's, yeah, it's yeah, a free square it. this week. If you deposit, this is why you want to go deposit this week. You go deposit, you use the promo code C3. You put $100 in, up to $100. They'll match you $100. So you can get $200 right off the bat. Your first, very first play, you get oh, you could get a free square this week because basketball is kicking off. So Steph Curry's a gimme, you know, unless there's some reason like I mean, if he plays, that's gonna come, that's gonna happen. It's a free square. They're giving you that, and so this one is really a four entry. You can't use the p word. The four entry uh, wager. I don't even know if you're supposed to use that word, but you're really only making three. So. Gotcha. This is like the week if you want to get a free pick in and put the pot and like to make the most of your money, this is how you do it. I don't know if this is the winning ticket. This is not gambling advice or advice. This is daily <laughs> fantasy football sports, but we're doing it. And I tell you this, I play prize picks even if they want my sponsor. Oh, dude, like, prize isn't picks it is awesome, awesome to have a sponsor where you're like, this is the coolest shit ever? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, dude. And look, uh, shout out to prize picks. That's our first sponsor ever. Our first legitimate sponsor. And so, dude, we love prize picks. Make some money, y'all. This is like literally, this is like we're giving away cash. Uh, St Steph Curry at uh, half a point. Come on. And by the way, on prize picks, they give you your first three pick uh, ticket, I guess, for free. So you can do three picks and, and they'll give you one of those for free. So I, I know that they, they did me, man. They, Price picks has been incredible. They send out cool stuff. They get like uh like on certain days. If you go in there and do it at a certain time, you'll get like bonus stuff. So it's really fun. Everybody I know that has played it has had a blast doing it. Daily fantasy football sports. That's prize yeah, picks. It's been promo awesome, code C three. Make sure you use the promo code C three. Yeah, download prize picks, play daily fantasy sports with us. Make sure you use the promo code C three when you sign up. All first time users. That deposit and use our C3 promo code will receive a $100 instant deposit match up to $100. If you deposit 100 prize picks, we'll give you 100. If you deposit 50 prize picks, we'll give you 50. That's prizepicks.com. Use our promo code C3. Good stuff. All right. Good stuff. Great stuff. Love prize picks. Um, all right. Something we need to talk about before we move on. And this is something, you know, Twitter is where we get most of our, our and a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about in the show, that's where all the rumors are posted. 
And uh, Panther Pickle wanted to talk about this this morning. And then this story popped across the timeline. And this is just a rumor, so take it for what it's worth. Uh, this is from Malco. He is hearing that the Panthers' defensive end, Brian Burns, is practically a lock to be traded before the NFL deadline. So I'm going to get everyone's opinion on this. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to go through and get everyone's list of players on the Carolina Panthers that are untradeable to you right now. Players that you're saying hands off, don't do not trade at all whatsoever. So let's jump into this. What do y'all think about trading Brian Burns? Um, what does that mean for the team? Uh, if Brian Burns doesn't want to be here, is it worth it? What are you thinking about this, man? Especially if it's for a first round pick. Um, I'll just start off and say, um, first of all, I really don't want to trade him. But if Scott Fitterer or Tepper or whoever else says there's very little chance they can afford to keep him or if Brian doesn't want to be here, then absolutely trade him, you know. Uh, but that wouldn't be where I would go. But if 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 but it wouldn't be no more. I would have to have a first and to me, a first round pick plus maybe a first and a fifth or something like that. It wouldn't have to be big, but it'd have to be it'd have to be worth it for me to trade him. Yeah. I mean, I I personally probably I wouldn't trade him. I, I just hate to see a guy like our defensive ends just we just keep getting like one the last time I remember it was Peppers. We didn't we didn't bring him and then we brought him back like later on in his career, but that one sucked. Um, obviously the Greg Hardy situation, that was unfortunate. Obviously that wasn't really a trade or anything, but that was unfortunate. And to lose a guy like Burns, that, 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 that'd be tough. I mean, I, I, I hope that we don't, we don't have to get rid of him. Honestly, I, I, hopefully we could figure out some sort of way to, you know, make the cap work. I think guys like Robbie Anderson, Shaq Thompson, like those guys m might be the ones that are going to be let go. Um, I, I hope we keep a guy like this, Brian Burns, um, big leader in the locker room, I think personally, and his field, his body of work shows for it as well. So, yeah, I mean, listen, he's our best pass rusher, hands down. <laughs> like he is our, I mean, he's our best defensive player. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he made the Pro Bowl last year. You know, again, I know that no one wants to get rid of the dude, but if the Panthers have an objective of getting a first round pick, right? And you're trying to rebuild and you're trying to, you know, acquire assets, this might be kind of virgin, kind of controversial. So, but here's I might trade Brian Burns before I trade DJ Moore just because I want our next quarterback, whoever that I, might I, be, to have a number one wide receiver. I, I would not trade DJ Moore under any circumstance, unless it's unless somebody offers me three first round picks for him. Yeah, which I don't think that happened. Well, go ahead, Nick. That's uh, why go I would ahead. never. No, Nick, I know you're. Gonna uh, say honestly, man. Yeah, like here's the thing, man. It's taken this long to finally get the defense to be able to stop the run. Right. It's taken this long for our offensive line to actually be worth a shit. Like. Now we're going to go into full-on rebuild? I don't know, man. I'm just not at that point where I'm at full-on rebuild. Like, yeah, we need pieces, but that's pieces where that we can pick up in one offseason. How many people yeah. are – how many of our players are actually walking away this offseason? I don't think there's too many of them. There's not. Yeah. Man, I, I wholeheartedly agree with me. Um, like, that, that's – for the talent that's on this defense, trading away, I, I, I feel like it's going to be dependent upon how the remainder of this season goes. Because if the team starts to have success, um, you got to do everything you can to resign Burns. On the flip side of that is if the teams, if the team continues to uh, look like they're going to have a top three pick in this draft, um, if that's the case, I think you do look at the defensive side of the of the team and you look at players that other teams might want and if i'm trade if 
I don't want I'm so if I'm the GM, I'm not mm -hmm. trading Burns for any reason. But going off of what others might do and what I would like to see if it did happen, it couldn't just be for for a first, like um like like Pickle said, it, it would have to be for a first and a later round draft pick and Hell, I, I still think that would be the, the opposing team trading for him will be getting a steal because you're getting a guy who, who's established himself as a pass rusher. I, if you're if you're trading Burns, I want a first. I want a second or I want multiple draft picks. I'm not giving him up for just one or two. So do do you guys agree that, like, if we had a quarterback, we'd be we'd be OK, right? I mean, we're right myself. there. We're right there. I mean, I don't see why we would just blow up the team. But, um, and I, most of the time, a lot of the teams that do, that are great, there are a couple outliers, but the teams that do ma make it and win the Super Bowl are the teams that they haven't paid their quarterback yet. Like they're, they're, they're built around, they have like the whole team around them. And then you just place that quarterback right there. And I, I think we're close. We're, I might be just a Panthers fan and saying that, but I, I think I think we're really close, honestly. If, Quarterback if, away. If you drift off and look at the, uh, the Bears, uh, you'll see a team that tried to build with the quarterback first. That was such a – by the time they get pieces around Justin Fields, he's going to be out, completely right. done. Uh, he exactly. really is going to be completely done. I mean, he may right. not be the most talented quarterback out there, but still yet what he is, he's going to be completely done by the time they get a um, team around him. I'd honestly uh, even go a step further than that. I think this team was the coach away, and now you got a new coach. Um, yeah. Honestly, yeah. I'm not sold yeah. after five games, and I know they've been five atrocious games, but I'm not sold out on, you know, leaving the Baker train quite yet. I think that, you know, this has been, it's been real bad. But people are also kind of forgetting it's been real bad on every front. You know, we have drop passes and fumbles and, and those PIs we were talking about earlier, right, all over the place on this field. So I think that this team really genuinely could, um, even with Matt Rule and everything that was going on in the last five games, uh, three and two is reasonable given what has happened. Now, it didn't happen. So obviously, you know, what if all day, but we live in reality. But the, the point of even bringing that up is just to say, like, this team has more talent than any one in four team I remember seeing in a long time. And I wouldn't trade anybody until at least the end of the year just to see how it goes. I, I could agree with that. So myself. the trade deadline is October. Uh, I mean, uh, no, like the first weekend of November, right? Right, right, right. Uh, so uh, let me let me pull, you know put this out there, right? Uh, uh, again, just to kind of further the discussion, you know, I, I put this on Twitter. I'm not saying we should do this, right? But Philadelphia, they have the New Orleans Saints first round pick. I don't think the New Orleans Saints are a very good team this year. I just don't. I don't think they have the firepower that they have in years past. I don't think they have their quarterback. My question to all of you is if the Eagles came knocking, wanting to give us a first-round pick. What about the possibility of the Panthers having not one but two first-round picks? That's never happened for the Panthers ever. I mean, I know we don't want to get rid of Brian Burns, but if you were going to get rid of him, like that might be the scenario in which you do it, right? Yeah, man, I mean... I, you just you can't guarantee that that whoever you draft is gonna be, yeah. But, it's but, gonna but, be Brian Burns. But, that's but, the that's my yeah, thing. And yeah, and and what if the Eagles say no? We'll give you our first round pick, not the exactly. Same. Yeah, you know. Oh, uh, then you, no, then you, you tell them no. You they they no. they're already <laughs> yeah. They're exactly. already one of the best teams. Yeah. We don't trade him for for anything yeah. else than their very yeah, I mean, top first round and, pick. And, the, the guy, the guy will, will, what's his name? Will, uh, in the draft, the defensive end or linebacker, rather, I call him. Oh, linebacker. Will, An will Anderson. Will Anderson. Yeah. Him. Yeah. To, to, to me, he's, he'll probably be gone anyway if we, but anyway. So, uh, yeah. I, to, I mean, unless we yeah, have the, to, uh, he, he's there. pretty much, he's pretty much a mirror image of Brian Burns. That's uh, just the way he is. Actually, Brian's a little bit heavier than he is. Will, Will Anderson is, 
is is a little and, lighter than Brian Burns. So. And, and I don't want to get lighter at defensive end, man. Me neither. Brian, Burn, Brian Burns, he, yeah. right now, yeah. he's at like the perfect weight for him. But realistically, we really need somebody who is a bigger body defensive end on the right. other side of him. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, 270, 280, something like that to me. So, but, yeah. um, but, so yeah, let's just oh, do this. We, we do have I, 20 gonna, players that will hit free agency at the end of this year. Do the, so, do look, the I'm going to come 20. No, go ahead, Eric. 20, yes. And I was going to do the Eagles have multiple first round picks this year? Yes. Yes. Because, yes, in my opinion, if they, if they are off, if they would offer, not, not saying that they would, but they were offering me both those first round picks and then maybe like a third or fourth or something like that. I would strongly consider that if I was. I would too. If they would give you three and two <laughs> first, I'd say, Brian, take a trip. <laughs> no, 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 so uh, let me ask you all this. I'm, I, I'm going to go around to every person, right? Now, this is kind of under the scenario that things go bad. Because I think they're going to let Steve Wills have an opportunity with the team as it is to try and make a turnaround. But if we continue to lose, and as that trade deadline looms, I want you to tell me all the players that you're not willing to part ways with at all whatsoever and the players to let go. Right? So kind of give me a list of both just off the top of your head. Uh, this was inspired by none other than Panther Pickle. So I'll let him go first. Pickle, give me your list, man. Uh, who is man. untouchable um, and who are you shipping out the door? DJ Moore is untouchable. Uh, All right. I agree. Akeem Iquanu is untouchable. Yep. Brady Christensen's is untouchable. All, to me, Austin Corbett's untouchable. Uh, I still like Derek Brown. Uh, I'll just add him to the untouchable list. Uh, and after that, uh, Jeremy Chin's untouchable and Horn. Is untouchable. After that, everybody else you can have for the right price. Okay, so that's pretty much our young, and that that's that makes sense to me. It's all the young players that have a ton of talent that you're going to build our future around. Mm -hmm. um, and, and by the way, just to add back to this Brian Burns conversation, yeah. again, as a fan, none of us want to see this man walk out the door. But if he comes up for a brand new extension. What if he's wanting Nick Bosa money? That 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 could be a conversation. To be honest, whether we like it or not, that may be a conversation Scott Fitter has already had with the agent. Maybe and the agent's maybe had with Brian, and they're pretty much saying, "Words, no way, in shape, or form, we're affording him." He's already told us he refused to sign. Maybe his agent said he ain't signing no franchise tag, and to avoid the conflict, and you can get a first now. That may be a realistic option. Whether I, I don't like the idea, I didn't include him because I've already talked about Brian Burns. But, you know, that could be a realistic option. Yeah. yeah. And I think that we need to consider that too, man. If Brian Burns – and by the way, wouldn't you ask for that kind of money after everything that you've done for the Panthers? Yeah. You know, and yeah. you've been busting your ass here for a long yeah. time. And, uh, you know, and you've had so many bad yeah. seasons. It's like yeah. – yeah, well, you might want to get paid that type of dollar to be here. You you're know? right. What's his name mentioned Julius Peppers? And I remember when we were trying to sign him, Marty Herney pulled out all the stops to get cheap Peppers. Mm -hmm. But in the end, Julius Peppers was, I want to play somewhere else. I've played in North Carolina my whole life. I want to play for somebody else. And he did. He got, got to go where he wanted to go or do what he wanted to do and play elsewhere. And there was no amount of money that was going to stop Julius Peppers from leaving because he wanted something different. So he did it the right way. He didn't hold out. He waited until the contract was up and he left. You know? Yeah. So, I'm a, I'll, I'll, I'll I have right. one player, and that's uh, Louvu. Um, that's that's the only player I could I, that immediately came to my mind that you didn't didn't mention. Um, I, yeah. Oh, that I, you I, don't want to. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not trading Lou I've seen more out of him, and mind you, I'm a Shaq Thompson fan, but I've seen more out of Lou in these handful of games, and I've seen out of Shaq 
in his entire time with the Panthers. So, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not. Yeah, Lou was a beast. I'm going to say. I'm going to go. All right, Alex. That that my three like I'm gonna go. I mean, on the defensive side, I'll probably say Burns, Horn, Chin. Like those three, I I kind of want to keep together. Um, I I like it. I think we're like, and I mean Luvu, that's a good one too to keep. Um, Derek Brown's a good one. Obviously, Iki Aquanu, you gotta keep. Um, I'm on the. I mean, DJ Moore and. I mean, I know no one wants to keep C-Mac, but, like, honestly, he is the guy that opens up the, the field for everyone else. So it's, like, hard to get rid of a guy like that. And I know he's injury prone, um, but you could just see the difference when he's out on the field. You just see that, like, it opens up a lot more plays for everyone else. So, I mean, I'm I'm going to put him as a lock. I understand, like, I understand the other side of the, the other point, but I'm going to keep him as a lock. Um, yeah, I'm going to say so. So DJ Moore, C-Mac, Chin, uh, Horn, Burns. Those are my five or six that I would keep. And so, basically all the, so basically all the valuable players. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. All the, yeah, like all, all the yeah. best players. Of course. Um, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> again, so under that scenario, like, you're not getting much value if you're talking about trading. Because, again, like that that's the, the hard part about this. If you're at that point of the season where you're looking to get draft picks for the draft, well, then you're trying to get cheaper. So yeah. the guys that inevitably are going to have to get paid soon are going to be on that uh, as a part of that list. Um, and, and, and guys that you already have on the team that established it w- would be a part of that too. I heard no one protecting Shaq. It seems like Shaq seems to be a popular candidate for a potential trade um, uh, if that ever yeah. happens. Man, um, got to cut him. Gotta Shaq cut him. Still <laughs> seems to have a bad habit, and I, I totally understand it. Um, I, I, I hesitate to make the comparison to when I, I played high school football. That's the highest level I ever got to varsity, 1A in South Carolina. Shaq is on an NFL team, and he played alongside some of, if not the best linebackers in the game. Every time I see Shaq, because he did it, I remember, I forget what year, he did it against Kamara, where he could have stopped Kamara from getting a touchdown. Um, It was a game. It it was at uh, the New Orleans. It was in their home, on their home field. He, he gets there, makes contact with him, but for whatever freaking reason, he tried to body blow him, which is something I would do back when I was in high school. Like, I got a guy coming across the middle. I got a running back running up high. No, I'm going to make this tackle look beautiful. I'm going to just put my shoulder in you, and you're going to go down. He did it last week against the Rams. I forget who the wide receiver was. And the dude continued, like, instead of wrapping up, he just throws his freaking shoulder into people like, bro, I know that that hit looks absolutely beautiful when it, it goes through, works properly, but technique. It don't work properly. Yeah, rap the, like, rap, like, I've seen Shaq do that too often. He's a veteran. Like, again, I, I, I never understood the hate. And part of the reason why I fucked with Shaq was because he wore the number 54, which was the number I wore the last time I played football. So I see 54, I want you to go out there and ball. And there's been times, there's been moments, but again, Luvu, I feel like Luvu was playing like we wanted Shaq to play. So yeah. if, if, if there's a team out there that wants Shaq, like yeah. if we're in that, 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 that I have frame it. of trading. Yeah. I have it burned into my memory banks. We were playing in the Superdome in the playoffs, 2017, and Shaq Thompson goes to tackle Alvin Kamara at the goal line and didn't wrap up, and Alvin Kamara got in. And, man, I've never been able to forget that. And it's funny that we're still talking about that problem that he has now. And, and no, that's so funny you brought up that play in the Niner Niner game last week. Like – it, that I was screaming at my TV for him not wrapping up and tackling. He just went straight shoulder, and the, the guy bounced off of him and, and took it another 
20, 25 yards. It was just like, yeah, I, I didn't it's a wrap up. You've been playing NFL linebacker far too long to yeah. not have the basic fundamentals instilled at this point. Not and to say that way, I can't do it. I can't do no, it. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's one of the things that made I, I, I'm I'm running through I'm running it through my memory and trying to recall a, a moment in time where I ever saw TD or or Luke not wrap up on a running back. Like I, I remember plays where Luke blasted through the line <laughs> at the point like we talk about getting to the point of attack with with uh, fucking the intent to to harm. There were plays where I remember TD and Luke blasting through the line. Running back just got the ball in his hands, and he knows he there is nothing I can do. Luke's coming with a full head of steam, and you still see him. Like, he makes contact. The dude's already going down, and you still see Luke trying to wrap the dude up. Like, And I remember uh, – I mean, there, you know, there were some times when Thomas Davis and Luke, um, you know, maybe they would miss an angle, or maybe, you know, they, you know they'd be a block or something. But they never failed to make the tackle if they had the opportunity to make the tackle. Right. And I've always felt like Shaq Thompson was a really good complimentary piece at linebacker, but he's not someone to build your linebacking core around. So, you know, I- and, and by the way, he is going to be $22 million in salary cap next year. So it would definitely be a benefit to get that off the books. Near Vosh with the $5 love bomb says, Shaq might go for a sixth and a half-eaten ham sandwich. That's possible. Oh, yeah. But damn, um, how Shaq, do you really feel? Shaq and Robbie will almost definitely not be on the team next year because oh, both of them are the highest paying – or they're, they're not the highest cap-wise, but they give us the cap, the highest cap savings. Yeah, if we, if we get rid of them before the start of the season next year – we will save about twenty mil, or there will be twenty million in dead cap, but yeah. we will save about twenty five. Yeah. So, but um, all, you know, I I, uh, I was watching I was watching an, a, a game from the Super Bowl era the other day, and what I found very interesting is in that game I was watching. Uh, you could watch it. Um. TD got hurt, and I found notable that when TD got hurt, that it wasn't Shaq that came in for TD. It was AJ Klein. And yeah, I thought I I forgot I kind of forgot about this issue, even when Shaq and TD were both here or Luke Luke and TD were both here as our starters. Shaq was the third man on the end. But it was TD who was the odd man, or it was yeah. AJ Klein. Even when you went on nickel, they often wouldn't bring Shaq in. Yeah, um, I mean, he really is. He's a well linebacker. He's yeah. not a Mike. He's not a strong. Nope. He's a well linebacker. It, right. Co- but it, yeah, go ahead. I just want to say one thing before, because I'm going to head out right now. Um, you know, I appreciate you guys. You know, Friday free for alls are always a lot yeah. of fun. And I, so I do appreciate all that you guys do, Cody, Tony, Panther Pickle, all y'all. I appreciate it. And I'm going to be cheering my ass off on Sunday. I'll be at, like I said, I'll be at the game um, in LA. I'll be there. So keep pounding, oh, yeah, everybody. Brother, What's Let's go. Hey, if, if you find oh, hey, other baby. Panther fans there, tell um, them to tune in to C3. For sure. For sure. I will. I will. Absolutely, and uh, man. let's, uh, for, for this, I'll just do it real quick. Score. Um, yeah, give me by, a score. The, by the way, st- statistically proven. All right, I've been to in my lifetime. I've been to uh, f- I've been to four Panther games. Okay, four Panther games. Three um, on the road, obviously, because I live in LA. So three on the road. So I've been in San Diego, Seattle, and then um, there was one more. Oh, LA. They played at the Coliseum. I'm three and zero. Oh. Three and zero oh is when I'm at the game. Obviously, I went to the home game. Uh, 2019, when it was the Rams Panthers week one, we lost mm-hmm. that one, but I'm three and oh on the road, so I'm I'm gonna keep going. Let's go four and oh, yeah, <laughs> four and oh. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say, uh, 2017 Panthers, let's go. I love you know, that. If it, you're, the, you're the good luck charm, dude. Let's go. 
uh, keep pounding Vegas Dallas. This weekend, the next game I go to, you're coming with me. All right, all right, <laughs> sounds good. So, I was at I was at that Panther Seattle game 2015, the Greg Olson game. Oh I yeah, wow. let's go. All right, man, you have a good one, brother. See you guys. Keep pounding, fellas. Keep pounding. Keep pounding. Shout out to Alex and one four Panthers, man. You know that that actually is a good segue. Let's get some final predictions here uh, for the game, and uh, and then we'll get up out of here and we'll call it a free for all. Uh, let's go to Panther Pickle, Panther Pickle, Kenneth. Let us know what is your final four prediction. What's the breakout player? The breakout player. Uh, Brown. Anybody at all? Brown. Oh, uh, Derek Brown. Brown. Right. Derek Brown gets at least two sacks. Uh, and Ooh. uh, good lord, you are and, talking uh, about a breakout. <laughs> two and, interceptions, uh, two sacks wins the game. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Fumble recovery, force fumble, fumble recovery, return yeah. for a touchdown. Hey, how about an interception? How about that? Let's yeah, let's um, do it. All right, what's your uh, final score? My final score would be 28 to 7. Who's winning? Panthers. Oh, what? Yeah, I I'm, like I'm it. in that flow. I might I like be wrong. I like I'll it. let you know Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 20, you said 28 to 7? 28 to 7. All right. We're going to smack them, according to Panther Pickle. Uh, let me go to my man, my man, Cynic. I'll go from kind of left to right here as I have it on my screen. Hey, am I saying your name right? Is that how you would like to me like me to refer to you, man, Cynic? Yeah. Cynic um, yeah. However, man, whatever. Um, or you can call me Jay. That's also that's my real name. <laughs> Jay, um, all right. That works too. Um, but yeah, you said that perfectly. All right, cool. Man. Um, um, yeah, give me your uh, give me your final score prediction and a breakout player. And the breakout player could be from either team. You don't have to pick a Panther. Uh, well, I don't necessarily expect anyone to break out, but if someone did, I could see it being Robbie Anderson. Um, you know, he does run a 4 3 40, and it really only takes one to have kind of pretty solid stats, right? You have two seven, five yard catches, something like that, and then a 75 yard catch, and your stats start to look really good. Um, so I could see something like that happening. Um, final score, I think probably – I don't think this is going to be a particularly good game. I think it's going to be a little ugly, but I think it will probably be around 2014 Rams. Um, you know, I don't think the Rams' offense is as potent as people would like it to be, but at the same time, I'm not, I'm not really – confident in the Panthers ability to I kind of think this is going to be a rain check game and what I mean by that is the primary problems like I've said earlier are, are disciplinary and if Wilkes solves the problem which I think he might um, I think it'll take him at least a game or two so I'm kind of just expecting this one to go the other way and then if anything's turned around maybe starting against the Bucks and and you know further yeah no that's a reasonable sounding score you know I, I mean it, it's certainly – I like what you said about Robbie Anderson. You know, it's like it, – with him and DJ Moore, it's like, man, give them one game and they can break out and kind of rejuvenate their season, man. It's like that's definitely possible. Uh, we just need it to happen. Uh, let me go to my man, Eric, Eric37. Happy you could join us again, man. Give us uh, your breakout player. And um, – yeah, who who's going to win, and what's the final score? I think the final score will be 24 to 17 Rams. And and I and I'll and I'll once again say Brian Burns. I, and I do believe that he'll get two sacks. I'll, uh, I'll believe he'll get two sacks this week. Uh, he was close against San Francisco last week. And I just and I just hope that we can come out with some heart because because I feel, because I feel like that there has been a big effort L lately. I feel like they haven't given it a crap. So, so I, so I hope that they could just get some life back into them and play with some heart. Yeah. All right. All right. Nice. Uh, tell me your final score one more time. Twenty-four to seventeen. 
24 to 17 Rams. 24 to 17 Rams. All right. I like that. I mean, you know, that's a reasonable score. Uh, you know, again, we have a very we have an uphill battle. PJ Walker has he's done some good things, but he's also, you know, he's thrown some bad interceptions. So I I understand people that see this going the other way. You know, it could definitely happen that way. JD, my man, give me your breakout player. Uh and uh who's gonna win? What's the final score? Uh so final score, I believe, is, is gonna I, I'll say the final score will be 24-10 uh Panthers with the breakout player being my heart wants to go defense, but I'm 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 gonna go against the grain a bit and pick uh Deontay Foreman. I believe he, he's going to be I don't want to say feature, but he's gonna get quite a few touches and, and make the most out of them. I think going into this game and for the foreseeable future, uh, Wilkes and McAdoo are going to need to lean on the run game in order to, uh, A, keep the offense on the field, B, not make P.J.'s job any harder than it is going to be. He, he is what he is. He's a backup QB. You don't want the game on his shoulders, and you don't want to be asking him to throw you victory. So, yeah, I'm, I'm picking Foreman as my breakout player. All right, all right, all right. I like that, man. And, uh, you know, Foreman, we, we've been wanting to see him for a while. You know, it, it'll be interesting to see what changes are made under Steve Wilkes. You know, uh, if we blitz more, if we run Deontay Foreman more, it'll be something to watch. Uh, next up, my man Nick. I need a breakout player, bro. And I need the final score. And who's going to take home this W? It, it, and it, I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to go with Austin Corbett. It's his oh, redemption all right. game. Oh, I didn't so, even think so, about that. Yeah, it's it's his redemption game. So I want to see how I he think does. I think stuff Darnold. <laughs> or Donald. <laughs> Donald. Not uh, not Darnold. Donald. Like, he's got to go up against the best. Good, good. Yeah, but you got to remember, he practiced against them for how many years? You know, and at the same time. You see what that guy does in practice? He tries to kill people with helmets. <laughs> blame them? People suck, man. Yeah, people do <laughs> you suck. Know, but, I mean, my thing is, man, he payback's not only. Then, right? Maybe yeah. Corbett gets payback. You know, I'll show I you. mean, the, the thing is, man, you know, Corbett protected Stafford for a year. And at the same time, he played against that defensive line for years. So I want to see what he can at do. At least he knows him, think, right? He knows him. And then on top of that, we have PJ there, and he's going to sling the ball. So witness the Walker wonder. Hey, let's go. Let's go. I don't know if we gave a final score last Tuesday, did we? Oh, I didn't. Hold on. Uh, 24-21 Panthers. Uh, Say again, 21. You said 21, 24? 24. Yeah, 24, 21, Panthers one. 24, 21. This is such right. a fan podcast, dude. <laughs> I tell you, I don't know if you Has anybody, well, only one person's picked the Rams. <laughs> hey, Tony, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, did we give our picks on uh, Tuesday? We, oh, did we? I don't think so. You know, I don't know if we did. I don't you guys think definitely we, didn't. Yeah, we didn't. All right, um, me, I've been right. I want to get my pick. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Give me I a want thir- Mine's play. 31 20 Rams. 31 breakout, 20 Rams. Breakout yeah, player, like Christian McCaffrey. Player. Christian McCaffrey. And I, that's not a breakout player when he's been the only guy that's done anything for us on offense this year, but. Look, I, the way I see this happening is that Stafford is going to – Stafford and Cup or, or Cooper Cup are going to eat on this secondary because of the injuries, right? Like, I just feel like you can – and, and if, even if they don't go crazy yeah. ballistic, man, I think they'll have a, some modicum of success given yeah. the fact that we are missing J.C. Horn. But at the same time, like, you probably could see our defensive line getting some action there. So I don't really – 
I don't think that uh, our defense will be dominant, but I think it has a chance to really make some splash plays at times. But I think on the offense, man, the new coach coming over, and I know it's the same offensive coordinator, but I think both of them are going to make it a point uh, to at least make it look like they weren't the problem on the offensive scheming. Like McAdoo has to run Christian McCaffrey this week just for the very fact that he needs to slightly throw some indirect passive aggressive shade on Matt rule. And this has got to work more, you know, so it's got to, so, I mean, I, I could see McAdoo going, Oh shit. Ever, you know, like I need to do something a little bit different. Yeah. And no, so I, Christian McCaffrey going to be featured in this game should be featured every week. 31, 21 Rams, the 31, 20 Rams. I think the spread is 10 and a half points. I heard today. Damn. You know, I mean, listen, you know, I have no problem picking against the Panthers if I feel like they're going to lose. Um, I'll start with this. My breakout player is Dante Jackson. Dante Jackson is going to secure that interception that's going to help me win my prize picks this week. Let's go. Dante Jackson, you're my breakout player. Uh, I'm, I'm depending on your brother. Let's do it. Uh, and then my I'm final score is I believe it's going to be a tight ball game. I really do think the Panthers are going to surprise. Ultimately fall just short. I got 17 to 14 Rams. Don't forget, folks, the last five games ha um, played by – an interim coached team in their first game after they fired their coach have won. Yeah, man. So that dude, Steve Wilkes might might make some magic this Sunday, man. It's it's a uh, it's gonna be an uphill battle. You know, I, I know PJ likes to throw some pick sixes, like Josh alluded to in the chat, and uh, they still have Jalen Ramsey. So hey, hey, that'll Corey, be. I got a quick question yep. for you. Yeah, yeah. So. We changed from uh, putting the pads on from Thursday to Wednesday. Do you think that's going to have any effect on game day? I think it was. Uh, well, yeah, I, I would think it will have something, some effect on game day. And what I think it is, is I think it made the guys stop thinking so much and just get out there and thump around on the field earlier in the week. You know, like not make this like, oh crap, we just fired our head coach. This is weird. What's going Back on? To this football. and that. Yeah, it's just football only right now. Is do what you got. Do what you have always done. You know, and that's kind of like an old school mantra in a way. And that's like, let's not overcomplicate this crap, folks. Yeah, let's get out the, there and thump think... a little instead of like, man. Rule said analytics so much, and then he didn't know anything about any of that crap. I guess what I'm really getting at is, do you think the, the do you think the extra rest day in between when they put the pads on and the next game day will be more beneficial than the other way around? No, nah, because I think they probably were cautious with who they actually put out there, right? So it's like, I mean, you saw a lot of did did not participate uh, mm -hmm. on the list, and so I think this is yeah. like it's like if you can if you're ready to go, go. If not, get over there on a the bike. McCaffrey's had his normal rest day was Wednesday, so he didn't have any pads Wednesday because he was his rest day. And for some reason, I thought it was Tuesday that they actually put the pads on, which was a day earlier than usual, but I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Interesting question, though. Uh, per se, we come out Sunday and win against the Rams. We're going to be going fucking nutso on this podcast is yeah, what we're going to do. We'll does, be like, we're going to a Super Bowl. Does that make the home game after that when we take on Tampa Bay? Does the stadium get full of Panther fans? Hell yeah. It makes it matter. <laughs> Think about that. Yeah. Think about this. is If you pull to two and four in a weak division, and then you're coming off a win against the former Super Bowl champions on the road – under difficult circumstances, and then you get to host a division rival who is, I mean, it makes that game day, seem man. to matter. Not if it's winnable or not, but it actually, and then all of a sudden you're thinking, man, we win this, we could win one more, we can win one more. That's but if we lose this one, it's going to be hard to get up for that yep. and say it matters. Yeah, man. It, but but that, dude, how about this? Is this... This this is the make it break, make it or break it game 
of the Carolina Panthers 2022 season. You know, the irony is we said that for the last three weeks, I felt like. Uh, yeah. Cody, I think that's more of next week. I think this week Steve Wilkes get a little gets a little bit of a pass just because of the players injured First game. and and the short week, you know. But next week is that game that's really going to set the tone. But do you for, come for back from a? If we lose this, we go to one and five. Right. If 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 we lose this and next week, does that make trade day extra yeah. important for everybody involved? Well, how about that? The the two I mean, two of the most you know two of, we have to prove ourselves that that we're not going to trade anyone against two of the most dominant teams in football. I, it might actually be a blessing, dude. It might be a blessing to be honest. You know what I'm saying? Is like to have these two teams right here the next two weeks. Yep. Like you kind of know by the end of that two weeks where you're at if you. Win one, lose one, maybe you haven't decided yet. But if you lose both, you, I think you know where you're at going into the right. trade deadline. And you know what's funny? You but know, if you, you win both, all of a sudden you're starting to go. Mm-hmm. And if it was the Jets, if it was the Jags, if it was the Colts, that would almost be fool's gold. But if you won both of these games, I would not call that fool's gold. I would call that real opportunity. And but. hey, you know what week we're in right now, right? Week six, baby. What do I always say? Yep. Week six, that's when you find out who the real contenders are. You separate the men from the boys. So. Just saying, man, you know, sometimes I do know some things. Honestly, but, I um, think one of the amazing things about the schedule this year is if you look at it, worst case scenario, Rams and Buccaneers both ended up being losses. Amazingly enough, the schedule is weak enough that you could still pull a winning season out of that because, like, like the Ravens are a threat, yeah. but the Steelers, no. The Broncos, no. The Falcons, no. The Buccaneers honestly kind of suck. So even if they do win, I'd have faith that the Panthers could beat them next time. Yeah. You know, so like as as terrible as it would be to be one and six, um, it's a pretty easy schedule down the stretch. Yeah, you're right. Oh. There's a winnable football games left to be had. Like, you know, there's – there's room to win football games. And that's why that trade deadline is going to be interesting. Do they decide to let Steve try and pull together something of a season, even if you're one and six or one and seven or whatever? Or do you just start to start the fire sale, start to build for the future? I don't know, man. See, that's my what only, I, yeah, go ahead, Nick. My only thing is, man, I've been saying this ever since Tom Brady came to the Bucks. Okay. If we do trade Brian Brian Burns, it better be after he sacks Tom Brady into retirement. That's it. That's my <laughs> only request. If he if he wants to go after that, hey, I'm fine. Well, with good it. news. We've got a uh, perfect timing. We'll see. Yeah, it literally is the most perfect timing. <laughs> it's right before the trade. Like deadline, the week so. before the deadline, <laughs> he's got one last <laughs> chance. Yeah. Well, man, listen. This has been another edition of the C3 Friday Free From, man. Two hours and ten minutes. This is the show for the fans, by the fans. We could not do it without you. We made this show so that you all can come on and give your opinions on this Carolina Panther football team. That gives you so much love and agony. That's what we're here for, man. Uh, If you like this video, but then do that, man. Hit that like button. Beat up on it so that way the YouTube algorithm knows who's boss. We've been uploading hella content, putting up extra videos, extra clips. We uh, we got a chance to interview none other than Jonathan Stewart the other night. That interview is on the channel. Go and check that out. Check out Believing Panthers podcast. That's the one he's got going on. Yeah, pick a football game. This weekend, man, with the Tennessee, uh, Tennessee, Alabama game, we got a Michigan fan in the house too, man. We can college football. Hey, you do excited, uh, pickle. Y'all gonna beat Alabama? Hey, you're muted. You're muted. Yes, we are. Yes. Yes, Tennessee will beat Alabama, and after this game, everybody's going to say Bryce Young, who? Who's Michigan got this week? 
uh, they're going to be facing Penn State. That's also going to be a top ten matchup this oh, week. Oh, nice! That's a good game. Yeah, I heard. Uh, I heard this about Tennessee. The it's ten, uh, that uh, there. There's such a fear that those teams are good and they always l- blow it in their home stadium. That like you can turn the home field advantage against them by hitting some big splash plays early in the game, and then everybody in the crowd is in this PTSD state <laughs> for the rest of the game. I thought I was like, that's crazy. Don't forget well, uh, also uh, uh, to go check yeah. out uh, Geeks Chasing Squirrels through the Multiverse podcast. Our boy Greg and them are starting probably right now. I think it started at nine, but that's for all yeah, kinds of like pop culture, not pop culture, nerd culture stuff like this Batman shirt type thing. That was my only plug. I'll let you finish out the show, Cody. Yeah, man, that has been another edition of C3 Friday Free For All. Once again, I am your host, Cody Lashney. We will see you guys again right here on Sunday for the postgame show after the Panthers play the Rams. C3 fam, you already know what it is. Keep pounding. It's the Walker Wonder.